Hello my beautiful badgers, Messi Coda back again with another classic live dev interview, this time with Kinematic Soup, the creators of Scene Fusion, that amazing real-time collaboration tool for Unity and Unreal. Oh my word, it allows teams to actually build their levels together in the same scene at the same time across the world on different computers. You have to see it to believe it. It blew my mind. But don't worry if you missed this live stream because on the 27th of December 2021, Kinematic Soup are back live with me on all the W's or Twitch or TV slash The Messy Coder where we're playing about with Reactor. It's their multiplayer engine for Unity. And it's actually what drives and powers Scene Fusion as well. Oh my word, it's going to be amazing. Sit back, enjoy this video and I'll see you all in a second. Everyone sitting at home in front of your Amazon mirrors, your Google Watches, your Alexas, your microwave PCs, give a warm and messy welcome to just from Kinematic Soup Creators of Scene Fusion. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Oh, thank you very much. When chat says, is this the here. real Justin? <laughs> this is the real Justin, yes. Is there a fake Justin? I I imagine there are. Um, you know, it's it's... I, I usually have my head down so much. I never, never really kind of keep on top of that stuff. So uh, <laughs> there, there could be a few out there. Giving away, very important. Giving away, very important to know your Justins. People. Exactly. Make sure you're getting a real one. Some real Justin. Everyone's saying hi, real Justin. Of course, that means I'm likely to have to buy it. Yeah. Well, look, it's free. I've seen Fusion doesn't cost you a penny. If there's two of you, we have up to two thousand objects. Isn't that right, Justin? Real Justin. Yeah. Going to call you real yep. Justin from now on. Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Um, yeah, we basically set up a free tier. We just when we when we initially built Scene Fusion, we um, you know we were kind of looking at the sessions and, and looking at what people were doing, and we actually found that there was just a ton of people who were, you know, they they had relatively small scenes. There were just a couple of people. They were working on scenes that never really got. They often didn't get up to two thousand. They were usually in the like nine hundred to fifteen hundred object range. Oh wow. And we thought, okay, well, you know, for the small indies who are just kind of building, you know, a vertical slice or or doing um, doing kind of a, a, a well scoped game that you know they something they want to get done in a couple months or whatever that seems to be the number. So we thought, well, we'll just make sure it's free for them, and uh, and then we'll we'll kind of have this pro tier to actually cover the server costs beyond that, right? Um, so so we, you know, it's 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 one of those things where we've. Uh, um, I think we had a lower limit. I think we had like a 500 object limit before, and then we we increased it. And we kind of do that from time to time because people build different games. Like the type of game that they build and the effort they put in changes over time. So we kind of try and have the free version track along with that. Well, how long have you been? You said you said this in the start. How how long has Scene Fusion been going? Uh, we actually announced it in 2016 at Unite wow. in um, in LA. And uh, we showed up with uh, a booth there and everything, and and uh, Amir at Unity Labs actually called us out because <laughs> um, uh, I'd been talking to him before that, right? Like like Unity kind of noticed us um, a little earlier. Yeah, I got to update the uh, pro, the uh, partners page since Pro Builder is now just with Unity, and we have we have. Uh, you got to change um, that to a Unity logo, yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't think I can just, I, I don't know if the partnership actually comes part and parcel with the acquisition, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on, on the Unity side of it. Um, we do have some other partners as well, but they're, they're pretty lightweight, so we haven't really put their logos up. Um, anyway, so we announced in, in uh, 2016, and it was kind of, it was kind of uh, uh, in beta <laughs> still at the time. We'd, we'd been working on was, it for, Was it, was you it know, working? Was it a well, I was working. Version? Yeah, I was working, but but it was it was funny because because um, we started working on Scene Fusion by we, we were doing something totally different actually. Uh, we were we were building a, a multiplayer system, right? So <laughs> I was going to ask, uh, did you start off by trying to make an MMO and it turned into Scene Fusion? No, actually, we we I kind of took some inspiration from Planet Side. Um, and I happen to have like a fair bit of background in, in networking and, and, and compression and stuff like that. And, and I thought I, I, I kind of understood what the problem was. Um, and, you know, of course, I've been doing software development for well over 20 years now. So 
so you know um and it's all been kind of online stuff so so i figured well you know it would be kind of cool if, if there was a system out there people could just pick up and use and it would give them kind of that scale out of the box with that level of interactivity um, so we started building that system and um, i i know one of the founders of club penguin and, and we were talking about um you know kind of big worlds and unity at the time because it was U unity 4 when we got started oh wow and um and uh, he said well you know the, the vision's great but uh, you know uh, you're not going to be you're not going to be building any big worlds on unity <laughs> <laughs> so you know unity 4 that was definitely the case right and the, the <laughs> landscape has changed Mine's a lot willing, since but the then. body's not able yeah exactly right like it's it, it would put in a good effort but that's about all you'd get out of it and uh um so so we thought okay well um we kind of experienced this this effect by accident because um the way we built the the way we built the system um the code would actually run an editor so what happened was if somebody was running a server um and we were we were all working on a scene uh one person would move something in the scene it would move for all of us oh and um and we went oh okay well that's kind of that's kind of cool um you know it, <laughs> you go, a, you a, go, that's annoying stop moving things we're trying to work well the coder the coder <laughs> side of it the coder side of us goes like oh that's a terrible idea <laughs> and um and then and then uh uh you know the, but the art side it, it makes total sense right like it's like yeah but but the thing is it's not a piece of code you actually you actually can go and like move a door somewhere <laughs> and somebody else can be working on walls elsewhere and all this other kind of stuff would, would uh, just kind of uh, pan out. Right. Like it, you'd, you'd, you wouldn't have to worry about conflicts. Everything would always be up to date. Right. You'd be able to go over and look at what the other person's doing. You can give them feedback right away. So uh, when I was talking to the, this, um, this guy from uh, Club Penguin who also actually invested in us, um, you know, it was like, well, that would be, that would be like a, a, a kind of killer feature. So, so we actually built Scene Fusion, and uh, we thought it would be kind of a quick, you know, few month project. Um, and it totally did not turn out that way. It just, <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's, uh, you know, what Unity does not like to do is two things at once or three things at once, right? It definitely does not like doing that. It can do one thing. So. Well, I can do one thing. It's like really basically, what I'm really talking. One thing. We haven't, we haven't yeah, yeah. always found out what that one thing is yet, but it's. But when we do, we're we'll really good at it. Well, well, that's just it, right? Or at least it does one thing at a time, right? Um, yeah. So we we actually found there were numerous components that if you tried to modify them while they're being kind of modified locally, or uh, you know, you just tried to to snap the the lock shader on something, um, we'd get things that were unstable, right? Like we were. We were crashing Unity a lot in the beginning. But this like is, and this a is lot. Unity four. Yeah, Unity four and Unity five. Yeah, like and, we and they, seen fusion they were development. The most stable of all the Unities. <laughs> well, we've actually then our stability has gone way way up because actually we've been much more stable lately. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, it's 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 interesting because yeah, a lot of the components you can't just kind of change values on them. We actually have to kind of go inside, like use reflection. You know, find things we're not supposed to find, and um, uh, gently coax them into working <laughs> while we while we do this collaboration stuff. And and uh, um, it it just it just took a lot. Like it it was funny because we got, you know, we were we were like we thought we were ninety percent there after three months or four months, um, uh, at least you know up to the point where we're not. You know, we're not do we're not doing terrain yet or any of that because yeah. that's that's like syncing terrain real time is like data heavy. So there's there was some work to get that kind of to work well. Um, but at least for you know just building the thing out, placing placing objects and and whatnot. Initially, you know, it would only work with prefabs too, right? You could only do prefabs and and uh, if it was a you know a empty game object or something, you know, we didn't handle that right away, right? So eventually, wow. we brought all those features in and. Um, it was just a, a matter of kind of like powering through it for the most part, and then some some kind of hard tech stuff for for things that are data heavy. Um, and then we got to here, so so I think we we kind of decided it was not beta sometime in 2017, and then we flipped over to using Unreal because so many people were bugging us for that. Um, I mean, what, and uh, what, what was the journey to Unreal like then? Because if you 
all this experience and background trying to get Unity to work and then one day just waking up drunk and going, you know what? Crack open Unreal, let's let's go crazy. You know, and that's actually this land like <laughs> And that's a remarkably accurate description too, right? Like Is because it? how else how else will it happen? <laughs> exactly. But uh that and Epic also contacted us and said, um, hey, your stuff looks cool. And here's a bundle of here's a bundle of cash. A little leprechaun turns up. Yeah, the bundle of cash wasn't that much. They gave us a little bit. Um, we'd already spent like probably over ten times more on it by the time they gave us the bundle. But but the the thought was uh, the you know the thought was that they could help out, and they certainly did, which was cool. Um, I think the experience with Unreal actually was smoother than than with Unity. There there's uh, there's definitely some some interesting things that happen inside of it, and it definitely also doesn't really like to do you know multiple things at once. Um, so we, we had to work around, like, like we had to work around it in some unique ways in Unreal that, that weren't an issue on Unity, but then totally different parts were, were totally smooth to build out, like totally easy, right? Like they just kind of worked without, without, um, you know, much hassle and, um, like, like in Unity, there's, there's something like 1500 components that you can use that are built in. Um, a lot of those we were able to synchronize automatically. But a non-trivial amount could not be synchronized automatically. So we have to have, write all this custom code if it's a certain component. And then, of course, whenever Unity does an update, we have to check to see if that still works the same. So, so it ends up being kind of a big, big mess. Whereas on Real, in like in Unreal, they they seem to follow these rules very consistently. So we had to do a lot less uh, kind of we call oh, it wow. custom translation. So they're very. Con oh, see, I would have thought it'd been the other way around. So Unity's so used to being effectively a bare bones game engine and heavy reliant on third parties adding all of the bells and whistles on behalf of Unity because they, they yeah, you know, obviously it's part of their game plan is that they concentrate on the core and they let everyone else do all of the stuff that you know makes it shine and be and and uh, be fancy. So you would, have, you would yeah. have thought that they would have been very strict on let's make sure that everyone who makes all these cool extensions for our amazing game engine are safe <laughs> and not having to worry every time that we do an update. Well, well, I mean, they they are they actually do a very good job of like I think they do a very good job um, considering how fast everything moves of kind of keeping up with the times and allowing backwards compatibility and stuff like that like. Yeah, you're gonna your your product's probably gonna blow up if you try and jump too many versions ahead. But you know, for the most part, they at least kind of do things incrementally. Um, and and I don't think they can be done perfectly anyway, right? Uh, and, and let's not forget but, when when you when you've got an old project and you go, do you want to upgrade? Do you want to import it to this latest version? And make sure you've backed up. Yeah, the most time, greatest the greatest lie we all tell, right? <laughs> 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 I've actually started to back up my things now. I've got, I've got, um, I've got like fifty versions of the same project, uh, but I've forgotten which one's the safe one. Uh, uh, and every time I, I, everybody goes, like, okay, new version of Unity, back it up. You know what? I'm actually going to back it up, uh, and yeah. then it works perfectly in in the new version. By you know, all my code works. I go, well, well, that's weird. Ever, <laughs> everything works perfect, but I keep the old backups. Just in case, in six months' time, it turns out that something didn't work. Like that paranoid little voice. You just get so used to getting poked in the face every time somebody sneezes. So that when you're walking down the street and you hear somebody sneeze, you immediately duck. It's just built into you. You can't help it. But um, yeah. I've not tried it with Unreal. So with, with Unreal, if you do have like an, uh, something like Scene Fusion made in, in a version of Unreal from a, a year ago, how different is it then, like generally, with those increases that you do, like in a year's time? It's well, it's a lot because it's a lot slower on Unreal. Um, I mean, you're. I think the philosophy is different. I think I think with Unreal, you're gonna basically version lock, and you're just gonna use that version of the engine. Um, Epic is really deliberate with their releases, right? They'll do a few patch releases, but they're they're um, they really kind of take their time to make sure kind of everything is solid and everything works together for the most part, right? Um, and and I, I think that's kind of a just a, a different philosophy, right? Mm. Epic is a is a studio. <laughs> uh, 
um, the stuff they release is the stuff they use. So, exactly. you know, it, it kind of goes, it goes through Fortnite effectively, um, kind of before, before it, it kind of hits the mainstream, right? Like they, they make the changes uh, for Fortnite and then they'll, they'll pull in some community changes or something. And Unity is, is, you know, they're, you know, they're not a studio. So they actually like, they, they, they kind of have their, their, their long long term support version, which is the solid version everybody should be using, <laughs> and then they throw all their kind of uh, you know quick updates and things uh, in the in the you know non LTS version, so that, that people can at least provide feedback and they can see what sticks and what doesn't, and you know kill kill things that don't work before they get too many people get reliant on it and stuff like that. So just a, it's just a different philosophy altogether, I think, right? I'm a little bit. I'm still a bit confused by the LTS because, um, I mean, today's a good example. Uh, you asked me like, what version of Unity am I using for us to play about? Because we're going to play about this infusion at the moment. Uh, and yeah. I was like, well, uh, 2019.4.15, I think, and that which is an uh, an legitimate. It was an LT. It says LTS, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to use that one. Uh, and now there's an LTS of 0.16. Uh, yeah. week, well. I've got point fifteen, and then point sixteen is an LTS. Is point seventeen? <laughs> is like how many? How many can be an LTS right next to each other? It was bizarre for me. I, I, I didn't expect there to be another LTS so close to a previous LTS. It kind of feels like um, you might as well just have all of them as LTS and go. You know what? All of them are. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Well, those little subversions are probably they probably have a, a rule for that, which is like uh, you know this is a tiny fix, like a security issue or an actual bug, but there's no interface change, like there's no you know or at least no significant change to an existing component or how your code will operate, right? There, so so they could have something where hey, Unity's you know Unity's analytics has some kind of security flaw in it, and then. You know, um, they're not allowed to. They have had to patch it. Flaws, Justin. They're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, I mean, true. If I'm if I'm working on an LTS, I want to feel safe. It's like I've yeah. I've got these pair of underpants and I've got used to them. I don't want to change them. Okay, I've got used to them and I'm happy with them. I've got to know all of the holes in them. And it, okay, there might be a few holes that are, that could be risky and dangerous. But you know what? I've worked out how to deal with those, and I might walk with a slight limp to avoid any accidents. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that, and, that, and that's what that is my uh, how my take on how the Unity LTS system works and how and how I should deal with it. Oh my word, Justin, we're being raided. Uh, for some reason, I, I don't actually hear any audio. Um, we're being really? raided by Honest Dan. And he's raiding us with a, a raiding party, uh, and Honest Dan is he started off doing a load of Unity stuff, just but now he's moved over to the murky world of Unreal, uh, and he does a load of Unreal development on his Twitch channel. So he's experienced both tastes uh, the, the, of, of Unity and of Unreal. So that means that if he were to use Scene Fusion, he could enjoy in any in either Unity or Unreal. For is it both of them for free for up to two users and two thousand objects? Yeah, yeah. In um, in Unreal, it's basically like uh, two thousand actors, right? So two thousand actors in the in the map, and uh, it's game objects in the. Um, on the unity side and and that we're talking the actual game objects like it has to show up as an item in the hierarchy um the the components you attach to game objects don't count against that at all so you can have a have tons of components on stuff but they, all the components still sync no yep even all the components even even uh, if it's not uh, a prefab so we don't sync the code right like the the code is is best synchronized through um through source control because you need to know who to blame when something like gets cocked up royally and and uh, uh you are coders... allowed to say that on stream you are allowed it, oh good <laughs> oh good you can't say fudge or bugger cocked up is fine yeah so fudge is bad okay all right um so i'll, I'll be sure to watch out for my confections <laughs> anyway um so so things like code you you really want to use like a, a source control like uh, workflow just because you know especially if you're you're doing programming you kind of don't want other people to be able to just inject a side effect into what you're doing while you're 
you know, you could be debugging a switch or something, and they could be reliant on some other class. And if that other class gets updated underneath your nose while you're trying to find the source of this crash, it just it, 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 you're just in for a bad time. And what about right? the public variables that you've got on the component on the object? Yeah, so if you add public variables and stuff, all that gets synced. So we detect. No way! Those. Shut the front door. All right, let's yeah, pop yeah, it in, works. Let's pop inside. Can I get an exclamation mark shout out for Honest Damn Games, please? Uh, I don't know why the chat hasn't already done that, as they know the procedure. We get raided by somebody sexy. You shout them out, so everyone knows how sexy they really <laughs> are. So we're going to jump inside Unity because I'm not using Unreal, but it's exactly the same uh, process for both. Correct? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was my password that I made? I cannot remember. It should auto remember that. Like if it you. It hasn't yeah. though. Oh, that's annoying. That is annoying. I'm gonna. I want my money back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One star. <laughs> really One fun. star. You, because you're not on the, you're not on the marketplace or the asset store, are you? Uh, not yet. Um, we're we're talking to the the asset store people. We're a little different because it uses it uses an online server to handle replication, right? So, um, it's. Or at least its primary mode is that way. We have a LAN server as well people can use for on-premises, but um, mm -hmm. for the most part, the easiest thing to use is just the cloud. And so you just, doesn't matter where you are in the world, you just say, hey, I want to start a session with your scene open, and the people on your team will see it show up in the list basically within a few seconds, and then what, they can just what, join what, it. What? We want. I could have 10 people in an office uh, over the LAN doing this. Yeah. And could I then have people who, who are out of the office going in? Well, basically, everybody just used the cloud version, right? Ah. Okay. Um, so 10 people in the office and then a few people outside of the office, they would all just use the cloud and it would just work for them. I see here that you you have a session. Yeah, just join it. So um, just because you, you invited me, uh, you sent me an invitation. So that invitation means that I'm now a member of your project. Yeah. Because I was wondering, yeah, we do that. I, I was actually wondering, how did I get invited to this project? And I, I, I realized now the click, uh, the link I clicked was not a verify your account. It was an actual. I've been invited to join Justin's party. Okay, so I'm yeah, like, oh. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but was there any it's, permissions it's just... when you invited me? Did you like go? Messi's going to have uh, limited permissions, or is it everyone has the same permissions? Um, you can be basically an editor or manager. Um, so you're, you're set up as an editor and you can, you can modify things. Um, you know, people who don't have the editor flag, um, you know, cannot modify things. <laughs> cool. So you can, you can have, just go here to the client. You've got read only. You can see what we're working on your game and you can't break anything. Yeah, effectively, it's it's uh, supposed to work like that. But to be honest, I don't think we've actually even tested that in a while because everybody's an editor, right? Like nobody. That's a great nobody... feature, though, because that because that's what it I is. Do. Yeah, because I've I've been in many situations where not necessarily for for game day, but where I've been working where you have to uh, show somebody in behind the you know behind the scenes, and you don't want them uh, turning on the engine while you've got your finger, uh, and you know working in there. So yeah. Everything dis disappeared. By the way, when I when I joined, everything was was destroyed, and yep. slowly. So now that's everything loading in. I've got green little circles, and I can see a, a floating camera looking at me. That's a little bit disturbing. Well, you know that's this is this is the multiplayer game that is Scene Fusion, right? <laughs> um, so <laughs> these cameras are our avatars. So you're blue, I'm green. Uh, we can fly around and do what we need to do. Um, and I'm the reason to why, in case you try to shoot me. Yeah, well, you know, I have, I have, I don't have the tracking I used to. I'm kind of old now, so I probably miss if I tried. Um, anyway, uh, so the reason why everything got cleared out when you when you started is um, on Unity. Like this is a difference between Unreal and Unity. On Unity, um, we set up kind of an empty scene. We don't open the scene, um, the actual scene file, if you're connecting in. Only the host has the main scene file open. Um, so, you know, I would open it on my end. I can host it. When you join, um, you're basically put in a copy, like a temporary oh. scene copy of what I have. And when you make changes, um, of course, they're all replicated immediately to everyone, right? But I have 
all of your work all the time. Um, and I have everybody else's work all of the time. So but does that so mean that I can't load the offline one, work on it by myself when I'm bored? And then when we all join up, everyone syncs to the version I had if I'm not the, the main. So if I was just yeah, like, 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 like what you'd want to do for what you'd want to do for a workflow is like if you're working offline, then you would, you know, you'd push your version to source control, then the host would pull that one, oh, say, and, cool. then, and then use it as as the one for the for the main, uh, basically for your for your collaborative session. So you do have to plan it out a little bit. And we have some things in the works that will actually we think will improve that a lot. Um, you know, make it a lot more straightforward, but it'll be, it'll be kind of a, I think it'll be a pretty radical change for a lot of people. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, a way to make sure that, that, you know, you never have blown scene merges, right? You just, it just doesn't happen because, uh, you're never merging. Everything's, everything's continuously done in effectively one virtual scene that is replicated to everybody. Um, and that that said, uh, there's there's I think a couple of settings that we don't have access to that are kind of embedded in the scene, ah. um, which is why we still recommend that the host be the person to kind of open it, and then um, you know everybody works on that, and then the host should be the last one out and the one who saves it and checks it in. So you're you're partnered with Perforce. Is that for some additional functionality, or is that for something secret that goes on under the hood? Um, we're partnered with them mainly because, uh, you know, we're both in the, in the collaboration space. So, um, you know, we have, we have some ideas of, of how we could work together, but it's mostly a kind of co-promotion relationship. So when someone like now, um, I'll be like, oh, I need to have decent version control with this so that, um, I can have all my code, uh, synced and I can have Kevin working offline by himself because he's got really dodgy internet this week. And he doesn't have a 4G dongle, so um, that kind of stuff. You, you go, well, why don't you hook yourself up with our partner, Perforce, and here's a, a good introduction with your account manager, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. No, I mean that's that's basically it, right? I can I I I can recommend Perforce. I also recommend Git and other things, right? Um, it's it's you know, there's there's a lot of people who who you know, for whatever reason, they've had bad experiences with Perforce, or they've had bad experiences with Git, Git, and they're just looking for something else. Even though you know, basically, use Git with Perforce, <laughs> right? I used to use um, the Microsoft one, and I, I was trying to remember its name today, and I couldn't. Uh, Visual its Source name. Safe. That's mm -hmm. Source Safe. I remember that. I know. Mean, was, was it something else? Uh, yeah. Vi well, Visual Source Safe. Yeah, that was that was Microsoft. The check in, check out system back in the nineties. No, a little bit later than that. Not that I was. I, I, I was still avoiding anything online back then. Um, oh, what was it? It was really nice. I really enjoyed it, and I was the only person in the entire company who enjoyed it. And then <laughs> they w went over to some subversion instead. TFS. That was it. TFS. I really enjoyed TFS. Oh right. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Because because I had my uh, project manager and product manager hat on most of the time, and. It was really good for um, basically if I if I was in a, everything in a Windows environment, I could then hook it into Excel and 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 stuff. And, and I was very lazy, uh, and literally <laughs> I was the only person out of about forty people who enjoyed it, which which is bizarre, um, and which that made me feel sorry for Microsoft actually nowadays. Uh, believe it or not, it's one of, one of the few people in the entire world to say they felt sorry for Microsoft. How how does this handle latency? And they, it's like if you if you've got a dodgy for, for two, first to, first thing if you've got dodgy internet, okay, and, and you're doing this, is that a complete no no? So um, um, like because these are these aren't huge files. These these are uh, prefabs. We're not talking about, if we were talking about terrain, like you said, that's a lot of data. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, like it doesn't. So, so it's not going to sync your geometry, and it's not going to sync your assets. So, um, you know, that's that. All that is just that's a source control issue, right? Um, what it will do is it will sync where things are in the scene, and it will sync the components attached to them, and it will sync the properties that those components have, right? So, you know, if you have a a, a bad connection, um, the 
the worst that'll that'll happen. Like if you're a client, you'll just you'll lose your connection and have to reconnect, right? Uh, latency doesn't really affect things too much because, I mean, we're we we run the updates at 10 hertz anyway, um, and most people are 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 you know working on different areas of the scene anyway, so it really doesn't matter if you know somebody moves a statue you know 100 or 200 milliseconds later than than um, you know than they did locally right so the 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 way we do the way we ensure that people only work on one thing at a time is we have this lock on select mechanism so if i'm selecting these things behind your statue for example oh, i was wondering why he was locked by yeah the fairy. so yeah so the, he's the fairy was locked the fairy's now unlocked because i've grabbed the wall right and you know I can oh, manipulate is, it. This is the, this. I was going to ask you this question because at work we used to use the stuffed um, a little stuff uh, ball, uh, ball, and it was a little stuffed ball. When you say uh, for say like when working on the database, and they'll go be like the devs would be like, "Who's got the ball?" And you'll hear them like, oh, "I've got the ball." Okay, now I'm touching that he's got the ball. He's the one who's allowed to work on that. Um, yeah. yeah. And like where I come in, we've got a similar thing. Like, okay, who, who's working that? Don't don't touch that. He's working on that. So you've got to have like teams open while you're working to tell each other what you're doing. Um, a, bit, a bit like uh, surgeons who who are working on the same body but are blind to each other. So they, and they have to work by voice. So with this thing, if I was now, I've got this one selected. And if I went to sleep yeah. or went downstairs and you're the, you're the big boss, can you kick me off of it? Can you like go, no, I want... You're you're not using it anymore, and de and make make me be deselected. Well, I mean, I could shut the session down if I'm the host, right? Yeah, that's, um, a bit, that's a bit extreme. It, it is a little extreme. Um, we don't we don't have any kind of sophisticated controls like that, where you know you can have permissions. We're we're talking about how to do them, where you know you could you could limit people to zones, or um, you know you could have some granular control over what people can do, like hey, this person can only touch this type of asset or something like that. And it's it's a fairly we've been asking around for for input and it seems like everybody has a different view <laughs> on, <laughs> on on what they would would like to see. Um, so we're keeping it fairly simple for now. Uh, there, there's actually a, a a project we've done like when we when we switched from doing Unity to Unreal, we actually kind of rebuilt Scene Fusion from the ground up, and uh, we we're putting some work into. Um, bringing those changes back towards unity right just because oh, so Un unreal's easier. actually got more because i saw on your website you called the unreal one scene fusion 2. does that mean yeah, that it's... unity scene fusion 1. yeah scene fusion 1 is powering unity um we do have a a, a a good chunk of functionality implemented in scene fusion 2 for unity already um we're just deciding whether we want to put it up kind of sooner before it's it's full-fledged or if we want to kind of complete everything first um and that that one's interesting because we actually that's where we can do some really crazy stuff like we can actually have unreal and unity talk to each other <gasps> uh, we did we we actually built a tool um that allows you to take scene data from unreal or unity and move it to the other engine no that's insane right? how would that so what? it's what that's how, what well well it's it's just the scene data right so you still have to have the assets in the right spots you have to have kind of the, the there's there's like a a naming scheme you follow um yeah, yeah, and but, there's but, a translation but just we'll we'll just it okay if yeah. i've if i've been making my project right okay bear with me now because this is a question that gets asked a lot right if i'm making my project in unity and everyone keeps on telling me you need to move over to unreal like they do right this is hypothetical mm -hmm. nobody get too excited okay um, and then a uh, an investor comes in and goes, all right, here's a, here's a load of cash, uh, but we're moving over to Unreal. And you're like, well, we can't. I've got this massive scene, 50,000 game objects all over the place because I got drunk one day. Um, and we can't move a scene from Unity to Unreal. Are you saying that we would load up, make sure that you've got all of the file assets, our assets in, in Unreal, and then that scene in unity would magically appear in unreal yeah yeah and um the 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 tool is is it's actually only been used by uh, one group so far because we, we we just made it this last uh just over the course of uh um was it last year yeah just over the course of this year kind of 
and um, uh, it's, it's actually Cinti Studios. <laughs> Um, it, it's it's something that that they in particular need because uh, you, I was wondering how they did that witchcraft because yeah. it was, I was like thinking how on earth are they are they able to to in their workflow go from uh, Unity twenty one and they keep on saying we you know we use Scene Fusion you know we 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 love Scene Fusion uh, without Scene Fusion we wouldn't be doing what we're doing we you know we we're, we're, uh, and you know they those, they keep, keep those guys are about. so fast. Wow, it, wow. they're so fast too like like we uh, we do um uh, speed builds with them which is basically where we you know we fire up scene fusion um and we let them do their work while we watch right because we don't we're, we're not exactly great level designers at our oh, I thought at you meant like it was a company like they would do a speed like who does it faster you or them and they're like okay ready go and then you have two teams speed building to see who can make the same uh, oh yeah, no, they would, they would just, they just kill us. They'd kill us in every way. So we, we, we don't take on fights we know we'll lose, right? But um, it's, it's, uh, it's they, they've. I don't know what it is, but they've, they're so dialed in with each other too. Like you, you, we have a couple of YouTube videos posted, um, and uh, they just, you watch them work together. It's almost like they've choreographed everything. Like that's how it looked. Yeah, and. Um, and it's kind of remarkable. They'll just like throw something together, and and you know it's decorated. It's full of stuff. Um, you know it's 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 interesting, right? It's well balanced and all that stuff. And it's just you know they they just have that kind of knack for it. So so that's always a lot of fun, right? Like like it's they they really they really kind of got into scene fusion. I think a, a few years ago now, and they've been. They've kind of been swearing by it, right? Yeah, they've been. Yeah, we, I think it was 2017, 18, 2017, 18. I interviewed Mike, uh, and he told me about, you know, we are we using this thing called Scene Fusion. I was like, oh, that looks cool. Um, and I was like, I can't afford that. Uh, you know, there's no way I would be able to afford that. So I just ignored the conversation. I just, part of me died inside uh, when I saw it. But, we don't make mistakes. It's, oh, thank we you for the serving tonics. Um, it's it's free for up to two thousand. And you were saying that you're when you were looking at the numbers, most people were like nine hundred to fifteen hundred objects in the scene anyway. But could I be cheeky? Like, could I be super cheeky? And what if I had, uh, you know, this scene here, and then underneath it, you've got another scene. Like you're working on multiple scenes in your in the project the same, in the hierarchy at the same time. Does that yeah, mean that like this it, scene is two thousand, and the one underneath it is two thousand, and the one underneath it is two thousand, or the, or are all of them together in the same session two thousand? All of them in the sa same session are two thousand, right? Okay. So, so you have one session. You load you load any number of scenes, or or say a scene or sub scenes or whatever. Um, then you will you will hit the two thousand object limit uh, if the aggregate objects and all the scenes is over two thousand. So you'd basically be like, okay, we're working on this scene now, lads. And then you'd close that scene, and then you would open up the next scene. Right, we're working on this one now. So you do it. You'd basically work in that way. Yeah, yeah, effectively like that. And um, the thing is, like, even if you don't, it, it's all the scenes in the session, right? And different people can have different scenes loaded. Um, well, how are you so, doing so that? let's say, let's say we have, let's say we have like kind of one scene that's divided into multiple sub scenes. Yeah. Like, or, or say A, B, C, and D sub scenes. You and I could have, say, sub scene A loaded together, and that's fine. You could have sub scene B loaded, and I could have it unloaded. Um, and conversely, I could have scene C loaded, and you have it unloaded. And we can each do our work in those sub scenes. Um, and then later, if I go and I load scene B, um, it just kind of pops in with all the work you've done, right? As though as though I'd been in the session the whole time. But, um, so, but you're still the host. Um, if I'm the host or if I'm I'm the client, that doesn't make a difference in that particular workflow. I'm confused. Cause what? Oh, am I? So you could be a host with one scene that we're both working on, and then I'm a host on another scene that you're connecting to. Yeah. At the same time. Well, well, if they're sub scenes, right? So you're so the host still loads the main scene, right? Yeah. Um, and if that scene has sub scenes within it, then that's where you know other people can kind of load those scenes up and work on them and whatnot. 
Um, and in in uh, we do the same thing with sub levels in Unreal, right? Um, and with with sub levels, it's it's uh, it's it's um, basically kind of the same workflow. Yes, isn't that? Can you self-host the server? Yeah, we have a LAN version, which basically, um, you know, once it's once it's activated, there's a there's a button in Scene Fusion that that installs it for you, and then you just start a session the usual way, and everybody on your LAN will be able to see it and join it. Um, and it's generally it's it's used by you know schools and and um, you know people who have film studios, and uh, you know they have to film studios in particular have problems with with cloud services for various reasons. So they they like to have kind of local, um, you know, local versions of things that they could use, and they're typically not working remotely, or at least they didn't used to be. Now things are changing a bit for them. But if, like we said about before, like you know, if I was if I was working, if I had a on prem solution, but I still want people to connect into it remotely, it wouldn't be cloud. I don't want it to be on the cloud. I want it to be on prem still, but them to, from their you'd use a connect- VPN. Yeah, at that point you're using a VPN, so you just just set up whatever, like a Open VPN or something, or whatever whatever your your kind of uh, you could, could use um, Hamachi or something even, right? And uh, um, you you'd have to actually specify the IP then of the host, so so it's not the nice slick. Oh, look, there's there's the list of sessions. I'm just going to join one. You actually have to go. No, I have to join the session. I have to know what IP it's on. Oh, um, so, how do you, so in there you you would. In this, what's it under the scene fusion? Uh, in the sessions, what is that? Um, there's a chat. I can chat to you. Oh my gosh! Hi. Oh yeah, chat's fun. How you doing? So, hi. Um. So that's so that that's this is kind of fun. All right. So um. Uh, just go and select a few objects. Like okay. Um, what? Like can I just select multiple band, objects? Yeah, bandbox a few if you like. Okay. Um, there you go. Let's see here. I've gone crazy. Yeah, sure. That that looks good. Now you see, go over to your hierarchy, just to one of those selected objects yeah. on the left. Um, put your mouse cursor over, say like SM Bid Castle Battlements Twenty there. Yeah. Click and drag it over into the chat window. Click and drag all the way to the chat, select right where you six. usually type, and drop it in that chat. Yeah. It said select. You put it select six. six. Yeah. So now um, just click off in the sky somewhere so you unselect your stuff. Okay. So I can do, I, when I click this now, <gasps> I get your selection. No. Um, which, is, which is pretty fun. Oh, um, my God. And then I can do stuff like I can fly over here and I can, I can type in uh, uh, look. And if you click that, you'll just go to my position. No. I, so, so there, there's kind of some fun stuff we did in chat like that. Um, oh my god! It's 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 kind of a kind of a neat way to interact, right? But of course, people people tend to be talking a lot more while they're while they're working together. So, do I do a hash look? What is it? Hash look or just look? Uh, hash look and hash select, right? right so, so if I click your look, I warp to where you are. Yeah, <laughs> checking out the dude. Showed you the man. Yeah, and we have other fun camera stuff like uh, back on the sessions panel. Um, you'll see go to and follow beside my uh, beside my name. Um, so if you hit go to, you'll just go to my location, look where I'm looking, and follow just keeps that capability on, so I can fly you around the level. Oh, that's crazy! He's flying me around, guys. So this is what I mean. Like if you had like if you had the README version working, which you're not even sure if it works or not, you just haven't bothered testing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's just it. Actually, I, no, I personally haven't. Um, I could I could just ask like the QA, my QA dev or something. Um, but I've I've actually been been uh, uh, you know generally always an editor whenever I've been using Scene Fusion. So I've never. Never bothered to use all of the functionality well, that it's, we have. It's great. Right? I'd be like, you know, I just I want to show you what we're working on, and they'll dial in, and you go like, just click follow on, on my name, and I'll take you around what we're doing, and then you're just flying them around. Yeah. That yeah, and I mean, it's 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 pretty fun. Um, 
there's no real limits to how many people you can have in here either. Like if we shared the project, we could probably have how many viewers have you got right now? Forty three. We could probably have everybody pop right in, right? Like forty three people. It, it would be pandemonium if everybody started editing, but you know, it's 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 something our system can handle, and it's that there's a reason for that. It's related to the initial reason why we started the company. So. Um, you know, basically we consider this thing a, a multiplayer game. So the core of it is actually a, it's a, basically a multiplayer system that's, that's built to handle very high player counts. Um, so it's kind of trivial for us to just, you know, replicate the data to, to who knows how many clients. Uh, chat's asking, are you nervous that it sounds like plastic SCM, which unity purchased is doing a very similar stuff where devs can work together on the same scene? Uh, no, uh, they're uh, not really. I mean, the, the 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 market's the market's quite large. Um, I mean, Unity also has you know they they have their collaborate effort and they they do this other stuff, right? Um, there's there's um, uh, Verse from Nvidia. There's all kinds of stuff, like all kinds of efforts out there. Um, and Unity doesn't really have a real time solution, right? They 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 still just don't. And, um, you know, Plastic has been around for, for a long time, but they haven't actually done the really, really real-time stuff. So, um, you know, eventually they'll, they'll probably do it. And, you know, it'll, it'll be, you know, we'll have our niche because there's a lot of potential features that, that you know, everybody can implement. Um, and if people like features that we implement better than the ones Unity use, they'll, they'll, they'll pay us. Like, they'll pay extra for those. Um, well, I'm... And... Big and industry, dude. The, let, let me just uh, let me unclick follow because it make make me a little bit dizzy. Uh, <laughs> and is Anderson Marquez is asking the camera control is happening in plain mode. This is an editor. Um, yeah. Now, you because if anyone came to chat and missed what, what was just mo mentioned a moment ago, which I nearly spat my tea out. Everyone in chat, I'm we're inside Unity at this moment. Okay, we're inside the Unity. Now, there's a version that they're working on, where which actually works for, for some uh, super secret people, Cinti Studios that use it. Uh, that real Justin could be using Unreal, and then all of this stuff from Unity loads up in Unreal, in the position that it is, inside Unity. And is it vice versa as well? If you had it in in yeah, it goes in, both. It goes both it has, ways. It has an export and an import. So, so we we have a basically it's a scene fusion two based plugin for uh, Unity, and it's the it's the scene fusion two, like the the regular scene fusion plugin for Unreal that you use together, um, and uh, and yeah, it's just kind of a you load the scene up in Unity, you hit export, <laughs> um, right? You connect to the session, hit export, and then uh, if you want to go the other way, then you you load the scene up. In Unreal, you host this, this, the the uh, session. Uh, you run the tool on Unity, and you click import. It's just, but what? But that's object or well, actors, so uh, wouldn't handle terrain, terrain textures, and all that stuff. Yeah, it doesn't do the 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 terrain work. It's it's actually, you know, Cinti really had specific requirements. So we we we've built it basically to to their spec. Yeah, because they've got um, these pretend terrain. All this is is actual meshes. Yeah, yeah, they have all these these kind of pieces that they they mold together. Um, but it's certainly possible to do. Like it would just be some more custom work that that we'd put together that we can do a, a translation of of landscapes. Uh, there's some tricks. I mean, you can do more with the landscapes on Unreal, but that gap is closing. So, you know, as as the 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 landscape and the the terrain functionality kind of starts to reach parity, it'll be easier and easier to kind of write translators for that so it's um you know like the the engines just don't map one to one with with all the features so there's just some stuff you can't bring over yeah like the um, scripts aren't gonna aren't gonna magically yeah. pop, come over and work yeah but we built the system to be extensible like you can just throw a translator in and say okay this is how we want this object handled and um you know you have the the decoding translator on the other end that that knows what to do with it and and it all it all kind of works out just fine right like you can always always code the bits you want like you could you could actually extend it yourself to uh sync assets if you like <laughs> you know it wouldn't it wouldn't uh wouldn't actually be all that difficult to do 
Um, but it would take up a ton of bandwidth. So, you know, if, if uh, you know, you, you plan on doing something like that, I would advise to talk to us first because, you know, we have to make sure, <laughs> make sure we've got, <laughs> we've, we've got some like, uh, make sure that we're, we're running your sessions on some like super beefy server somewhere. Right. And well, that's uh, going to be my next uh, question. What if, what if somebody's uh, one of your clients does something silly and takes out all of the other Steam Fusion users that are on the cloud? Um, that's pretty hard to do. I mean, there a lot of people are running on isolated virtuals, right? Or we run servers on isolated virtuals quite a bit. Um, getting back to the the you know kind of multiplayer motivation that we had. So, um, you know, these you could you could probably wipe out your own session if you did something crazy, but it really wouldn't affect anyone else except I don't know maybe maybe give them a slight hiccup if there's if there was a noisy neighbor situation if they were actually two virtuals running on the same like bare metal hardware or something which um, chat but... feels like i could accomplish it they, they they really believe they have faith in me that i could i could i could break everything it's quite true i possibly could find some well crazy way of, of destroying the universe if i, if I really well wanted. i mean i could i could just maybe select everything uh, <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, what, cause... if, what if I deleted something? Uh -huh. how, how, have you? Like, I'm just going to. I'm just going to do it. There you go. I, I just, just select. I just deleted. I selected everything. Did you delete something? I deleted something. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. you deleted something. Have you selected? Yeah, so you had... See, see oh, we got a bit of. We got a bit of. See, I deleted this before it shows that you've selected everything. Yeah, yeah, you got in there just before I got it. Um, so, so, so you've yeah, you've, you've deleted world. it. Too late. I, put, I deleted. Yeah, I protected it. the world. Yeah. But now, how do you bring that thing back that I deleted? I don't, because we run different undo stacks, right? So you, ah. you can undo that. Um, but can I undo when you've got everything protected? You can. Well, if you undo it, like whether I have oh, everything it's protected back or and not, it's does. Yeah. 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 Well, it's locked by you, so it's it's protected. Or yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's. Is it unprotected? Yeah, yeah no. Would it come back if it's not selected by you? It'll be unlocked. So, oh, I do you go see it now? Um, which one is it? Where is it? Hang on. I can, I, hang on. One minute. Just drag it to the chat. Yeah, and I'll that's click what I was going to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm dragging it yeah. to the chat. Yeah. I was, no. I was ahead of you. I was. I remembered how you use the chat. I was so excited by this. <laughs> yeah. No. It's. It's. Uh, it looks like it's there. So, so you've got so there isn't like you know it's so if I deleted this and was like I'm deleting it I'm not putting it back because we've had a fight and you're like no put it back uh, <laughs> for you you session, have to have some team cohesion yes you can you can have fights and you can you can really mess with each other and and uh, you know trolling is a trolling is a thing um, <laughs> trolling I mean is we, we yeah, well, we 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 had well, you should have when we we built support for EXR right when it was um, uh, editor VR initially. Um, you know, we were testing, but we just couldn't resist the urge to to spawn ridiculously huge prefabs. You know, pick them up with one of the controllers and spin them around over our head, and then chase each other around trying to whack each other's <laughs> little scene fusion avatars. Because instead of a camera, of course, we we show little dudes, right, little floaty dudes with. Uh, VR goggles, um, and and uh, you know in general, I think you know there'd be somebody would spawn a sword. You'd have a little sword fight instead of building the level. So there was a lot of a lot of shenanigans that we found actually pretty irresistible, which <laughs> you know kind of made us question our direction a little bit. That in itself should be the game. This should be just it, instead of calling it an editor, it should be a game. So if you. Going back to the, I'm, I'm still, I'm still intrigued. If you now delete, say you delete the thing that I, I dragged into the, into the, into the chat. So, see here, is this it here? Yeah, that's it. All right, so, so you, I can delete, delete that. So it's that's gone delete. now. Yep. But now, if I do undo selection change on my undo, it redo selection change. Redo it delete just, object. Wow. Yeah, you're gonna be it's gonna be your own stack, so it'll be your stuff, right? I yeah. can undo mine. See it, right? it can't Something it can't like bring it back. Even though I had yeah. the redo and undo in my uh you know, my in my uh 
my buffer yeah, of, yeah. of the undo buffer. Uh, yeah, no, we we actually we actually handle that. We kind of take those buffers over. <laughs> um, it was was one of the was one of the harder problems to solve to come up with something that works reasonably well. So, you know, there's there's ways to break it. Like there is a way to kind of like flush your your undo stack so that you just can't go further back. Um, and that's just you know you can't really get around stuff like that. It's in the the literature seems to be a common problem, and there's lots of ways, different ways that you could choose to solve it. So, it's kind of more important you just choose a way, and people understand it, than it is you know you try and find exactly the right perfect solution that always works because you know it probably doesn't exist. Wow, this is crazy. Um, proof Messi's net die. Hang on, is the is the stream up? Or is the stream down? We what? We did we manage to break the internet by deleting it? No, we didn't. The stream is up. No, but stop trying to confuse up. me. Stream is, stream may have been working fine. Yeah, it's up. A <laughs> <Hey>, fix <laughs> confused me. I was like, we may not have broken Steam Fusion, but have broken the internet. Call me Kim Kardashian from now on. That's my <laughs> new name. Uh, <laughs> This is crazy. I love this, dude. I love it. I really do. Um, how does this asset play with placing prefab, uh, prefab placing assets like Gina? Have you have you used Procedure Worlds assets on Unity for mass placing objects? Um, I've, we we actually did some work with Gaia way back when we were were uh, much earlier in the process, and um, we kind of learned a lot about interacting with other plugins. So. Um, if it's if it's an if it just places game objects, um, what Scene Fusion does is it kind of has this little background scan that goes on, and it looks for new stuff all the time, right? Oh, so okay. it it it's aware of what's there. Uh, it, it's aware of kind of the stuff it's tracking, um, and uh, it, you know it it there's things you need to do to kind of tell it something is new. So we we look for various. Uh, events like for example there will be an event fired when somebody spawns something right so when that happens we go and we check and see who has something selected and then we go okay that person put it in because it's selected for them let's let's put a tracker on it right so oh, then yeah. it can be tracked with the with basically a virtual hierarchy that we have online right um when you have something like gina they just kind of like spatter these game objects into yeah. the hierarchy and scene fusion you know it it doesn't necessarily know about them um until until you know somebody selects them um but we do have a there's a there's a piece of scene fusion that's just kind of continuously um slowly scanning the hierarchy so it, if uh basically if you don't get the green dot beside it um it's not synced right so your hierarchy everything shows these green dots so you throw something in there with a script um it won't have a green dot but if you wait eventually it will because or if i go control control a yeah if you select it, it that's kind of like hi. Here's an object. Uh, so actually, one of the one of the things that uh, you know, if you have an asset, another asset that actually does automatic game object placement. Yeah, I you have, go I, into I, the I code it myself. I yeah, write, I write scripts that do that to make to make my life easier. Yeah, you just what you do is you have them place the asset, then select it, and then just doing that is enough to tell Scene Fusion that it's there. So it's actually a tiny, tiny change, right? Like select it, and you could even you can even like wait a frame and go back to your previous selection, right? So you know, save your current selection, uh, select the things, the objects you just placed, wait a frame, then go back to your your previous yeah. selection a frame later, and that's enough. And Scene Fusion will pick it all up. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh my word! This is crazy. And I mean, so, how, how does the license? Because if chat, chat, you know, you you get this co um, debate, and, and I saying the same thing the other day. I was like, two thousand doesn't seem like a lot. Uh, and even Yolan in chat's going, two thousand is not a lot. Wizard Sun Co saying, no, we we were well within that budget in our game jam, um, and they're they're debating amongst themselves about assets that um, generate um, on runtime. So procedurally generating your um, art assets when when you, when you click play, so that when you're in the editor mode, you actually you don't have that much going on. But um, actually, I'm not sure. Two thousand 
does does it seem like a lot? And the question we've got is how many are in this session, in this scene? How do I how do I see? How it's in the upper left corner in in your main viewport. You'll see scene fusion online oh, and the number 8, of objects. Eight thousand nine hundred and thirty three objects. So yeah, right, nearly nine thousand objects. That's and a, I mean like every pebble in here is a game object almost yeah. right like this this is a this is a cinti scene for demoing purposes right um i don't know if it would even run well it'd probably run pretty well as a game there so it's a pretty optimized yeah. um but what about but usually there be a... any, they don't have lod's uh that's the other thing about cinti cinti does cinti don't do lod but if they if i did do lod that lod would be a child of this so for example Yep. Therefore, it would be another object in the hierarchy, wouldn't it? I don't think it would be a, an object in the hierarchy. I think it would actually be a component, isn't it? No, no, it's a, Is... it's a. I'd ha I'd have a an object for LOD version zero, an object for LOD one, an object for LOD two. Yeah, and the yeah. component in the parent would reference those three different objects. Right. Yeah. No. That's the. the, the yeah. No. Those. Those would definitely like basically. It's the hierarchy that tells you anything that shows up in the hierarchy, whether it's a, an object or one of the object's children, uh, will count. Right. What about what about if I open up this prefab, for example, in here, um, and you see this this looks lovely. Mm -hmm. What if I had like five things in here, and I use some kind of mesh combine? If it's Anything that is one object in the hierarchy will be one object again. So let's say you even put, yeah, you 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 have a whole bunch of meshes or something yeah. crammed into one object. Um, that will count as one object, right? So so what happens is you can actually kind of like start if you if you really want to push things, you could you could actually combine uh, you know a bunch of meshes and kind of make your objects more complex and be way under that budget and build these like crazy huge huge complex levels whoa 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 one minute one second when i started up um the 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 scene because i had i had the free license it was like yeah. you've got uh, you've got only got two thousand uh loud but this has got eight thousand nine hundred thirty three things in was i still in the session at that point uh no you wouldn't wouldn't allow you in the session it would basically like say hey no you you need more you need more space right all right so, and, so if i'm the, if i'm the host and i've and i've got this scene up here at the moment and i'm working on it and we get to about i get to about this part here and it's two thousand uh objects and we've all been working together and we are great that's two thousand objects now I grab all of those and I mesh combine them so it turns out to actually be about 200 objects because I've mesh combined a load of stuff together. Now that <clears> means <throat> everyone's been, does everyone now magically mesh combine on their ones or do they have to no, leave we, and rejoin? You would, you would have to, because mesh combine will effectively, you know, it's going to build new assets for you, right? Yeah. Um, so, so they will need those assets. Um, what will happen is they will, when when you do the change, right? So we do mesh combine. What it, what it probably will do is delete the, the the different assets and replace them with combined assets. Yeah. What exactly. the rest of your team, what the rest of the, your team will see in session is the affected assets will be deleted, and then we'll put stand-ins um, question mark stand-ins um, at the locations where the new meshes are supposed to be. And then oh. what you will do is you will push those new assets into source control. control. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so, so in, you, my, so in my GitHub or some version or, or whatever I'm using, or, or TFS from, 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 of course, I'm by myself, um, they would then, in their project, magically appear. But what if, what if I'm so backwards because I'm allergic to, to source control um, because I'm, I'm still a coward? Um, <laughs> and... I just gave you a zip file and was like, stick this in your project. And then they went and put the art assets in a different folder in their, in their Unity project. But, yeah, uh, that, so there would be no mapping, right? Like it, as far as Scene Fusion is concerned, those would just be different assets than, than the ones you want, right? Um, so, you know, like what it would do is if they put it in the right location, 
Scene Fusion will detect, oh, the assets are here now, and it'll go through and it'll replace all the stand-ins with the, with the, uh, the correct so it's asset. Not, it's not looking for the asset of that name or the meta information of that asset. It's looking yeah. for that asset in that exact location. Yeah, it's looking for a path. So you, so why isn't it using the GUIDs? Oh, y'all are saying the same thing. Yeah, why isn't it using uh, the GUID of the object to, to find Well, that? because you can end up with different GUIDs on every client, right? So, um, like, you can't. You can read GUIDs, but you cannot set them. And this is another ah. reason. This is a difference between Unity and Unreal. In, in Unreal, you, you can set them. So, you know, the, the replication on Unreal for everybody who's connected is 100%, right? With Unity, um, the the clients basically join in and they get different GUIDs because they're, they're basically building up a copy of the scene to work in, right? Um, it's something that we're improving with Scene Fusion 2 for Unity, but even so, um, going forward, like into your session, whenever somebody places an asset, um, you, each Unity client is going to, assign the thing a different UI, GUID, right? Just because we don't have access to, to sync that type of thing. I've, I've asked Unity about that. Um, so, you know, so maybe maybe one day they'll consider it. So, real Justin, what, what I've just heard you tell me, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll just translate what you've just said, okay? You've just told me that my team should build the scene using Unreal, and when we finished, export it from Unreal to Unity, and that'll make my life so much easier. <laughs> it actually it potentially could. Um, you know, we never really thought about doing it that way, but it's it's certainly a plausible plausible approach. Um, things like lighting settings would be drastically different, so I would certainly leave that until, you know, you got, you got uh, Unity up, and sometimes lighting can become very important during the building process, so... Um, you know, there's, there's, there probably be some, some adjustments to be made there, but, but it's definitely, definitely something you could explore if, if you really were, were, I suppose, that masochistic. <laughs> Am I the first person to say that to you? No, actually. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, I was say, there's got to be other crazy people out there. Yeah, no, there's, 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 uh, I mean, there's all kinds of people who are, who are like, oh, yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be totally useful, you know, if we switch engines and, or, or, um, then there's of course people who are like, well, that's that's cool. Um, I didn't even know I could ask the question whether that was possible, <laughs> right? So it's um, it's uh, it's it's been an interesting kind of a, an interesting uh, ride through this whole project. Well, the um, in chat, Yolan, one of the, one of the one of my sexy mods, he's actually made a, an asset himself called Asset Manager. Uh, yeah. And if you do an exclamation mark, Yolan in chat. There you go. Um, so he, he's basically now already thinking how to get his asset manager working with Scene Fusion. He goes, uh, sounds like um, our game jam workflows will work. Hooray. Sync assets with asset manager, version control prefabs and scenes. Uh, yeah, so there you go. should work. Yeah. Um, so so all remember, if you, if you, you uh, actually, you shouldn't have to do anything if the asset manager is just syncing the assets. Um, Scene Fusion's automatically going to just put a stand in somewhere, right? So if what somebody the, have had, you got something on yours that I don't have, and then add it in, and I'll and I'll and I will get a, a stand in, so we can see what that's. See here, is. maybe I'll just create one. So I'll maybe, oh, well, that's a whole house. I'll just grab a bunch of things and create maybe a single, single thing out of them. Oh yeah, you and, could just grab a load of prefab like objects and make a new. I, I, yeah, I'll make a new prefab. Um, kind of like this. I, whoops, whoops! I bandboxed on my end. Damn it! Fat fingering my own, my own project. All right, so let's just grab those items. And, oh yeah, I did it again. Jesus! <laughs> Why is this? No, no, wrong tool. Where's the right tool? All right. Let's do it this way. By the way, Yolan, should if you able. put your asset manager on the asset store, you should lock it in a DLL. That's all I'm going to say on that one. Do it here. Maybe if I do it under there. Is it set to a maximum oh. of 2K objects per scene? If so, a large open world split into small size scenes for each tile world could be done within that limit. Yeah, exactly. Because 
because number of, that's what we were saying earlier it's, it's 200 whatever's in the hierarchy so if you've got 50 scenes you're only looking at one at a time in the hierarchy then you're fine i gotta do some kind of weird parenting thing here to get me my my new prefab it is dll lock. i'm not happy variant but yolan you should really make it available even with a dll if I release the story, it'll probably include source. Don't include source. Don't trust human beings. They're all criminals. All right. So now you have stand-ins. Um, so I just I turned thought... these little question marks. Those are stand-ins, right? All right. So when I click on the question mark, can I click on the question mark? Here we go. Scene fusion yeah. warnings. Missing prefab script. Yep. So, so you you have that. Fab asset kinematic soup. Uh, oh wow! And there it is here. Now, now just for fun, um, I'm gonna because because we're on the on on the Discord. I'm gonna actually send you that prefab to just copy into the location, which is a really ugly uh, simulation of so what source control would do. See, no, no, um, that, that's that's my source control. That's how I use source control. My source control is. <laughs> Uh, my source control is 50 local folders manually copied and files <laughs> all with a, all named the time that I've done that copy no that's that's uh, you know that could be a terrible <laughs> idea right <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can send you these these two files the prefab and the meta file though you probably won't really need the the meta file so let me just grab our little thing here so you're going to want to put this prefab in your assets slash kinematic soup folder because that just happens to be where i put mine so, so straight just want into to have... the uh okay right. so assets slash kinematic soup okay I haven't gone yet have you, have you said yeah i know i'm just i had to type in the <laughs> the the thingy so there's the prefab Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 and as long as you copy it to the right location, it it, it all works. You know what? I'm uh, I'm really tempted to copy it in the wrong location. Yeah, it won't do anything then. Oh, there you copied it to the right location. Oh no, wait, no, sorry, that was mine. <laughs> or was that mine? <laughs> I haven't done anything. I'm yet. getting confused. I I have my my version of Scene Fusion up. Do you have your version of Scene Fusion up? And that's what I no longer know. I no longer know what reality is. Now it's going to start going boop boop. Right, so I've got it in assets kinematic soup, uh, and you want me? Oh, you want me to put it in the scene fusion subfolder? Uh, you should put it in the kinematic soup folder. It should pick it up oh, there. I have done. Oh yeah, it's, it says it's synced. It does say it's. Oh, maybe maybe there's maybe there's some maybe I did something wrong. I Could be my fault. That's okay. We can fix that. We also we also want to change it because like on Unreal. Um, so right now you get these these. Oh, red maybe because you marks. didn't give me the meta files. It could didn't I thought I did I thought I dragged that in too. No, I don't have meta files. Unity's going to generate one anyway. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you probably need that. I think the GUID is stored in there. Um, but the GUID actually doesn't matter. It's just the name that matters. So but yeah, in the, usually in this the picks scene, up. It's also called uh, with a brackets thirteen because it's your thirteenth, but this file has got the 13 with the underscore rather than move its brackets maybe it does need that metaphor to say that it's the brackets oh possibly try clicking you see how on the scene fusion in the ux there there's two notifications click see details you can click that and it'll actually give you more information and this is just generally useful so like if if you'll get notifications if people have different versions of an asset so you know you have a mismatch of properties or something like that um back when when we made scene fusion we had kind of a zero tolerance policy um and and uh zero tolerance policies suck <laughs> so a lot of people were complaining right where, where basically the zero tolerance policy uh, meant that you know you could not um you could not be out of sync in any way otherwise it would basically say oh no get out right no session for you um and we found that that was maybe a little a little too heavy-handed and and a lot of people just you know they they could picked up scene fusion they tried it and then it just wouldn't work for them they they'd go ah no this is too hard so we we put a lot of grace in like scene fusion's really tolerant of of project differences like if you didn't have if we were in the same same uh, scene fusion project so we could we could see each other's sessions 
and you basically had an empty project with just Scene Fusion installed, and I had the full project with all the assets. Uh, you would still be able to see the session. You'd still be able to join it. It's just you'd get stand-ins everywhere, um, right? Because because yeah, you would like have this, nothing. Like this thing. Yeah, so yeah. If you hang on, if you rename your prefab, right? So you rename your missing prefab to be uh, something else. Yeah, let's see. Right. I can try that. And then I'll rename my one to be some the same here's something a, else. Is yours called variant? Mine's called variant, but. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it. See, I was gonna say sm underscore prop. Oh, I tell you uh, what, my one doesn't look that. I'm, I've opened mine up in the um, open the prefabby doo doo, and I yeah. don't have. Whereas yours looks like something inside of something. Are you sure you gave me the same something as your something? Pretty sure I gave you the same something as my something. I hope it is. Um, I just just something. renamed it to SM Prop Path, but now I'm now I'm getting into into areas that I'm not entirely sure how we're going to handle it. But I love this. in in theory this... it should be just fine. It should just be like okay, yeah, that's just that's just that. And, I love it knows what it is. I love that we're we're going naughty. So I'm renaming mine to SM underscore Prop Path. Yeah, yeah. Editing prefabs during a shared session is not supported, so it said no to me. Um, <laughs> if I drag mine into the scene now, right? Yeah. Do you you should get a nice question mark? Yep, I have I have question marks, and cool. I can actually see see the other things you have selected too. Right, so I'm going to give yeah. you my one, right? All right. But I'm going to give you mine with the meta doo doo. Now stick it in the same hole. So the kinematic suit. Let's see. We got that. We got Crazy that. Crazy madness is going to happen. Obviously, I can't see your screen, so you just got to tell me, and I'll believe you, what happens. I suppose I could always share mine. You could, but is it? It should work. It could do that. So, so I put it just in the kinematic suit folder, exactly. place where, okay. as you can see on the on the on the stream. All right. So I will. Show that in Explorer. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for two things. One, could I possibly have broken a little bit kinematic <laughs> scene fusion i think i think you did yeah we've got oh. even with the meta file it didn't swap over so yeah we're gonna have to have a look at that it's you're welcome me. buddy this see this is what happens when you go to a uh a, a former qa engineer for for live stream yeah i know that's that it does happen i always we we always have something pop up from from time to time it's like oh yeah shoot did we did, you know did we, did we handle that properly in this version of unity that's the other problem right exactly. like we we support we support back to 2017.4 still. Really? Um, because because we are masochists. Um, and, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, we support back to Unity version 4. <laughs> well, we did. We only recently ditched um, Unity 5 support. Wow. Um, so ten, and, so what basically it might still work if you're using Unity 5. It's not officially. <laughs> Well, we have, um, in, in theory, actually, the old versions will work because, I mean, the back end, there, there's, there's, you know, a server component to this stuff. And our, our system's actually designed to version snap everything together. So the the right scene fusion clients will always work with the right scene fusion servers. So when we release an update, um, and even if it changes the server side, um, with, with very few exceptions, you could still use the old versions. Oh, right? brilliant. Hey, that, that actually see stuff like that makes me so happy because I have I have so many arguments with with companies where it's like it should make no difference to you you should be supporting like, exactly what you're doing uh, if I'm on using Unity you know 2017 I should be using a Unity 2017 supported uh, server instance I should not be on the same as somebody who's on 2018 or 2019 um, yeah. And, yeah, that, and that or is at just least a it, simple, you know, it's common sense. Really. Yeah, it's it's actually it's it, like it's generally it's just locked to like you know scene fusion, scene fusion versions. Uh, scene fusion two is a little different though. Like it, um, the the server versions 
uh, almost never change. <laughs> so, so you know, it'll you you can have many many versions of the plugin that that all can kind of use the the same version of the server for for a very long time because the 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 server's um, uh, much more generic than it was with Scene Fusion One. This is oh, mate. This is. I was yesterday in awe of Dungeon Architect. I don't know if you've seen Dungeon Architect. Um, yeah, I, I watched the stream. Did you? Oh, you watched the. So, so when he was generating all of those objects uh, procedurally, still in the, in, in the editor, it wasn't it one time? Uh, but you, you could you could do it one time. You saw when he was doing the. You know, do it one time. Click click space. Click space. You'll see it doing it. So in the editor, it was procedurally generating that massive level. Um, so. It would be able to work as long as it was selected. But it, I, I think they were being selected as they were being generated, and it was like select, select, deselect, select, deselect as it was popping along. It, or maybe it was just my eye that caught it. But if not, like you say, you just wait until the green light comes on, or force it by doing a control law and then a control D. Yeah, and that's. I mean, to me, that's crazy that I could have. Dungeon architect, uh, and I would go look. I'm just going to procedurally generate a dungeon now. Boop, do it in the editor, and then everyone who's who's working on the project would suddenly get the same procedurally generated scene in the editor. Yeah. Yeah, it would. It would. It would probably work just fine. Wow. And how much is it on the? Are you going to make me cry? If we go to the uh, the pricing page, let me, let me go into there. We 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 uh, we actually we when when people pay for Pro, it's like twenty five dollars a seat per month, right? So it's it's uh you know we run the servers and and um, there's also an annual yeah an annual kind of licensing fee. So five hundred a year for two people. That's not per that's not per person, is it? That's the total. So if I had two, so it's it's two fifty per per seat. Yeah, yeah. I, it's basically pay for the maps. Pay pay for pay for ten months. Otherwise, it's twenty five per person monthly. Oh, you and so you get the two months for free if you do yearly compared to monthly. Yeah, effectively. I mean, we we've gone this way because you know on on it, this ended up being way higher effort than we thought. So like <laughs> we kind of thought we could build it for you know, uh, you know, pay pay someone for you know six months and have it work. Um, but it ended up being quite a bit more than that and uh and never, and, uh, ending, so, never ending additional development because the game engines yeah. don't stay, stay still although yeah exactly. you could say uh scene fusion works up to 2019.16 uh lts uh for the next year that's the version you have to use uh, and um everyone who comes to using fusion would would agree yes i'd rather force myself to use an older version of unity just so i've got the opportunity to use Fusion. i think you're good enough to be able to force people to comply to you rather than the other way around well we i, I mean we try and keep up though right like because because if we don't people ask so so we do our best i mean there there was a new version of uh <laughs> scene, people. Uh, how dare they ask <laughs> Well, they, they, it's it's normal. I think um, I think did we release the twenty twenty dot two version yet? I can't remember. I think we're we're done, or we're just doing QA on it. So, you, so it takes got, we like twenty twenty point one on the download for, for you. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, think we have twenty twenty point two live. So you, it works yeah. on a Mac. Yeah, yeah. It'll work on on whatever. It's oh. it's uh, Unreal is different because Unreal actually has some. Uh, we have some some binary libraries in there and. Pretty much, well, almost everybody uses Unreal on Windows. Um, so we have we have two plugin updates coming. So we do have a 4.26 for Unreal um, that we have have building, and we're actually switching to to install directly from the Epic Marketplace. So Scene Fusion is on the Epic Marketplace right now. Oh wow! Um, but the Epic Marketplace doesn't sell for it. Epic's actually, I have to give kudos for Epic. Like their their marketplace is is really good. Like for you can you can kind of do whatever you want, and they just support it. They don't really they, they make money off of it, but they don't seem to care. Yeah. <laughs> um. And and they don't really you know, need it, do they? They they don't really need it. They got you know they got Fortnite, so um they got Tencent writing big checks. So um, 
with with unity there's more restrictions on the asset store so there's there's kind of like a partnership process and and i've like it was said on your stream i think the other day where um uh like if you want to put an asset on the unity asset store like you're you're not you're, you could make a good living off of it if you're kind of like the top asset right um and and you know what happens to the majority of people is they'll put an asset up there. We put a couple assets up there too, and they'll get a few sales. I mean, I think we, yeah. on our other asset, we made twenty bucks, right? It was a bunch of asteroids, but still, you know, it's it, it was not, uh, you know, it wasn't exactly a money maker. It certainly didn't recover <laughs> recover the the costs <laughs> of development. Yeah, it wasn't the next for so so. Um, it, and it's very tricky. Like they they you know they have restrictions on what you can do. So us. Using external servers is kind of a no-no, right? The external account stuff is kind of a no-no, um, at least for making it on the asset store. You have to have a special relationship with with Unity to do that. So they have a process you go through, um, and then you you pop on. The biggest uh, one of well, not the biggest one of the biggest uh, bugbears that people have with the Unity asset store is not being able to manage uh, custom revenue models so um you've got say uh, a subscription based model for an asset but unity is yeah. like no nope, no nope, you can't you can't have that it has to be uh you know sold on the store and, and whatever it is um on on the store so does the so unreal you say like they, they basically let you let you get away with, let you do whatever you want and not really worry yeah. so you can yeah you could be selling your your asset on the store and go, okay, it's thirty bucks, but if you want support, it will be twenty bucks a month. Well, as long as you have like because you can use it for free, it can go on the the Unreal thing as a free asset, and you put in the comments it's free for under with these restrictions, um, and then you, offline, right? Like through our our onboarding, we can we can bring people in on on uh, kind of the monthly payment schedule, right? Um, and Epic is okay with that; they're totally fine with that. They don't process the pricing. They don't care. <laughs> like they're they're very. It's remarkable. Um, like kind of how how easy they are to work with. I I'm really. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm in no way um, sold to to one corporation over the other, but and I and I actually started um, on Unreal Tournament many many years ago. I made a yeah. uh, I made a Wild West mod for our Unreal Tournament. Um, awesome. I, I was making it with a friend, and in the end, just did it by myself. And I've got happy memories of using um, old. Um, it, it wasn't milkshake, but it was something. It was very. It was a very basic, wind free Windows modeling um, tool. And I would make the Winchester rifles and and the pistols and stuff myself. Uh, and have very happy memories of sitting there watching John Wayne movies in my bedroom, making uh, weapon. And it was the it was the only time I remember my dad walking in and smiling and being happy with what I was doing on the computer, rather than you're wasting your time playing games <laughs> and making silly games because he's a massive Western fan, uh, probably right yeah. for. So he'd go and go, "What are you doing? Uh, watching D Martin and John Wayne? Oh, good. We've seen this one before, so well, obviously." And he goes, "What are you making there?" Yeah, it's Winchester. And he looks and he goes, "Oh, that's actually <laughs> quite good." <laughs> like, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, then carry yeah. on. I will. And then you show him. Then you show him how you bring it to life in the engine, right? That's <laughs> that's that's always the coolest part. Well, Throwing the, the assets. The, the uh, it, it's it it was better. Uh, the making part. That's a weird thing. It was more fun making it than it was be, until it was ready because. You were you were molding it with your hands, which is I feel uh, where um, you know super uh, super fusion, where same fusion. <laughs> that's your new product. New product is called super fusion. Mmm, delicious. Um, well, I think that's where this actually comes very addictive because you're describing you know it is a multiplayer game in the editor, but sometimes you have more fun building your scenes putting things where you want them than you do the game. That's why there's so many games like uh, Fallout 4 where 
you're building your town or whatever on all these games where survival games or rust or minecraft you know there's all these games where people just spend all this time building things and that's that's you know what this basically is um it's a fun editor based um so what am i going to say like a rust minecraft game it's weird it is it is such a strange experience and it's you can't dis i'm sorry everyone in chat you can't describe what this feels like it's very surreal having having somebody else inside your editor it's a it's a little bit uh, like there like he just pokes his nose in it it feels like you know when you're sitting there watching the tv on your sofa right imagine you're, you're used to being in your house by yourself uh watching tv on your sofa and then your neighbor sits down next to you and starts eating your chocolates you've seen him before you know what he looks like and he's been in your house before but you've never expected both of you to be on the sofa at the same time in the same chocolates it's just what are you doing here <laughs> what do you mean i'm eating your chocolates what are you doing here oh, you know I'm, I'm adding some trees it's very strange um, did i miss a sub didn't get an alert i did not get an alert i am terribly sorry what happened luco thank you for gifting us up to hiko six you are beautiful luco thank you for giving the gifting us up to i testing luco you just gifted two subs you beautiful badger thank you for those two gifts do you know what um real justin not fake justin uh because people are being generous gifting subs to each other um it's so weird you your camera just shoves in my face the weird thing is is that i know to you i must be a movie camera as well moving in your face mm -hmm. it's just so it is so weird it is so weird okay everyone do exclamation mark scene fusion in chat if you want to play with this it's free for two up to two people two thousand objects in your scene however some people are already complaining that that's not enough for them uh, because they, they feel like their projects are really big. You know, regardless of the fact that they could have multiple scenes and only load one at a time. No, that's still not good enough. They want more. So um, scene fusions are going to be welcomed in your home for the incredible generosity from Kinematic Suit, from real, real Justin. Not fake Justin. This is real Justin. He's giving away three prizes uh three prizes of one grand not cash money that you can spend you know down at the kebab shop or to your local drug dealer no so uh one grand uh budget uh for three lucky winners so that's three prizes of one credit one grand store credit let's call it store credit should we call it store credit justin it helps my brain. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just we can just add credits to accounts. And... <laughs> That's how my brain can handle it. My brain can handle it as store. You get store credit. Basically, it means that uh, if you does that mean that if you were two people, you could go two years on that. Yep. So you don't have to use it up in the first year. Yep. Yep. You just use it up as you need it. That's crazy. Oh my word. Am I allowed to raffle into this? Uh, chat, am I allowed to chat like thing? No, you're not allowed. Um, this, this is, like yesterday, I, I, was, I was explaining, and thank God, Justin, that my wife was not in chat to hear how many assets uh, that I've got. But we, I, you know, it was, over, it was one, 1,200 assets uh, that I've got in the asset store. Uh, okay, and it's worked out about let's say 200 of those with free assets because i don't really do a lot of the free assets um i feel that they clutter up my my um my, my account you know the free ones um and yeah. i'm very fortunate and I, and I tell my wife this she goes do you enjoy doing the videos and the streams and i said honestly um it's very stressful to me um because you need i as I say, I used to be a QA engineer. I'm a, I'm a head of product. I, I've lectured and, and taught people product management, project management. I love that stuff. And chat asked me to do it. Hey, by the way, exclamation mark raffle in chat, everyone. Put exclamation mark raffle if you want to win. The raffle has started now. Exclamation mark 
raffle in chat to win $1,000 store credit for quite possibly the most amazing thing I've seen all week. This is amazing. So um, I don't, you know, I don't really, it's very stressful because you need to inspect all of the assets that you're doing. If I'm reviewing an asset, I actually like to delve into it as much as I can because it's somebody's livelihood. You can't review something and go one star like um, some YouTubers like to do to, 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 to make a shock video because that's actually somebody's, that's how he makes his rent. It's, you know, it's disrespectful. You need, to, you, you need to be constructive. So for me, so it's, I feel very stressed by that. Am I, am I doing it right? Have I missed anything? And my wife goes, well, stop doing it. And I went, well, no, because I'm also getting free assets when I'm doing it sometimes. So I'm not stupid. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, occasionally, I get a free, a free, a free gift. So, um, so yeah, I'm really blessed. At no point am I ever taking it for granted. And I'm incredibly thankful for anyone who trusts me to review um, their stuff and gives me uh, a license. I also make it very clear, all of the reviews that I do, and everyone's in chat is wondering, you know, are they biased? Watch some of the reviews. I, one guy gave me, you know, I did a review and I said, look, um, this is a nice asset. I would only buy it full price if it was on sale, because that's my honest opinion. It's a really good asset, but it was too pricey uh, for the functionality of what it had at that price compared to competitors of what could do similar things. But on a sale, it was well worth, well worth it. Um, so, yeah, I'm 100% honest, and I've even once given a like a, a massive uh, critique back to some I normally do it back in an, an email so I go here is an email back with all my findings of bugs and issues that I might have much like we played about today just uh, and sometimes people like it and sometimes they don't um, and in that 1200 assets I've done I've played about with a fair few hundred not all of them dungeon architect was one yesterday which was one that blew my mind this again is one of those assets that as soon as that camera moved in front of my face, I felt my palms go sweaty and my heart actually started to pound. I honestly felt, when, when we started playing with this, I honestly felt my heart beat, go, you know, my, heart, my pulse racing. It was such a weird experience. You honestly, chat, you cannot understand the weird, it's so weird. It, that's the word I can describe it as. It is so weird seeing a camera fly around and it's moving things in front of me. And the, what the hell was that? It just put a person down. And I saw it when you were moving it. Yeah, yeah. That, does, that, uh... hang on, does that mean when I'm moving it, you can see me move, not just when I let go of it? Yeah, yeah, I can see everything you do. So what the hell? No. I thought you just saw it when I let go of it. Oh. Yeah, no, I can. You can move it around. Okay, no. Resizing. Everything happens live. Like it's it's a. Oh my it's God. A... Jesus, you're just stretching it. Okay, look. I honestly, this is honestly my reaction. I'm not bullshitting anyone at home. This is bizarre. Who's mentioning it? I thought it was when you let go of the control. I honestly, all this time, real Justin, I thought it was when you let go of the mouse, it syncs. It's yeah, no, it's it syncs uh, live the whole time. Yeah, but there's live and then there's live, real Justin. Well, this is pretty live. I, I'd say this is on the more live side of live. <laughs> exactly. Pretty, this is, when it's you, pretty lively. When you said live, I didn't think you meant live live. I thought you just meant, you know, live. Like the kind of cheating live that we've come to expect. If things oh, like super images. duper, like completely live. Like like it's a, it's a multiplayer game. Oh, my God. And what if I, I can't grab him because you've grabbed him? But I, can, I can grab him so I can see him. I just can't control him. Well, you you grabbed him. I I had the I didn't have focus on him. I had focus on the joint I was modifying. Oh, so, oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! So you can actually open him up and go into. All right, like hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Justin, Justin, grab. I'm opening him up. You grab one part of him, and I'll grab another part of him. Yeah. Okay. Click the root to expand the root. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, wait, which one are you gonna do? Um, I don't know. I'll do his left shoulder. <laughs> oh, I can't do. Oh no, you've got. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you've got his, his leg. Okay, I'm gonna do. So I can do I'm this. Do you, can, you can do the. You can do the uh, upper leg. 
It's the same prefab. We're moving the same prefab. Jesus, man. I'm really not sure what the use case for this is. I don't care. But, um, this is awesome. But it, yeah, you kind of don't really care after a certain point. <laughs> oh, my God. This is really cool. Oh, my God. I've actually so, got a tear in my eye. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is this is why you'll always have someone in there supervising. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, because... Because people gonna are gonna screw around probably a little bit from time oh to time. Oh my god! I'm I mean, actually, they're, they're, I've got Justin. I've got tears in my eyes. I swear to you, no lie. Oh my god! Pretty. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! You can do some pretty crazy Gary's mod style goofing off. I'm sure. Oh. Cinti Mike keep going on in me. You got to play with it, and I'm like, I, I will. Yes, yeah, so, 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 and I said to him, it's just for when you've got you know big scenes. I mean, I don't you know. And somebody said earlier, I think it was Irish John that said, does do you get a free game, a free friend with it if you don't have any friends? Trust me, if you've got an extra license, you know that to someone to use, he's going to immediately be your friend because I don't care if you've got if you're not even making a game. This is. This is more fun than Seven Days to Die, Minecraft, Rust, anything. Just playing about in the editor with each other. Oh my god. And that's actually, that ended up, that, that's a thing um, that we kind of discovered, which was, um, I mean, schools, schools are using this, like some schools are using this uh, to kind of keep their students engaged. The students like it because um, they kind of expected unity to work like that in the first place yeah right the kids coming up these days they all were playing minecraft so you know they fire up unity and they go what do you mean we can't work like together together <laughs> um and then on uh one of the first kind of big titles that came out that actually used scene fusion during development was um the lost legends of redwall by uh, soma games and um they actually used kind of the LAN version because they had you know terrible internet at the time and um their their art team, when they spoke to me, uh, felt that they were moving, you know, two to three times as fast when wow. they could work together like that. So it's 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 there, there's this huge benefits to it, right? And of course, yeah. there's things going on in the movie industry, and you know, Epic actually has multi edit now, which you know. Um, well, they started working on a multi-editing plugin once they saw what we were doing. I, I was going to say to you, like, because um, you know, there's so much going on. I mean, Unity's trying to get on on it, uh, but we like, like earlier on this year, I interviewed uh, Quantum Theory, who's actually was working on The Mandalorian for Disney yep. as one of the environmental yep. artists, um, and they're you know all, all, all that kind of stuff. You know, you're using Unreal, getting into yep. into the actual real cinematic stuff where Unity's trying to trying to enter that space. So, uh, I I don't I didn't know that Unreal would have if they've got their own technology or not. But this kind of stuff, I it would it would be just like you know your common sense. Yeah, you'd think so. It's just how do you execute it, right? And I think what's going to happen is, um, you know, we're doing it. Unity's Unity's um, probably going to do it. You know, Unreal's working on something, but our approaches are all going to be very different. And and you know, I think there will be different groups that kind of prefer one approach over the other so you know unreal has um multi-edit we have scene fusion um people still choose us because they can't set multi-edit up uh for remote working right so and then and the, also we sync terrain and we sync brushes and all this stuff that that multi-edit doesn't um so what we'll probably see is is you know it'll just be you know, there'll be different features available and you can always diversify your, your features and always find your, your niche um, when you're doing this real-time stuff. And, I mean, we have we actually have another project. <laughs> um, so we're not, it's not just it, Scene it Fusion. on your website, Fusion. it says that you're doing, you're doing a multiplayer thing. Coming, coming soon, yeah. multiplayer. Oh, can I, yeah. Justin, before we play, can I, because uh, we we're going to do, we're going to give away three, three $1,000 credits. Okay, for Scene Fusion. But instead of doing it like doing an open raffle and then doing an open raffle, um, you know, three rounds of the raffle, I'm gonna open up the I'm gonna open up the raffle again. Okay, anyone who missed typing in, oh, see Irish, Irish. If anyone who missed typing in, uh, do exclamation mark because we're not gonna do uh, open close, open close, open close, open close. So type in exclamation mark raffle now if you missed and didn't get it in the first time. Uh, and we're just going to pop. I'm going to pop over to the the website of of kinematic suit. I keep calling them 
kinematic fusion and 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 soup and scene <laughs> soup fusion scene soap kinematic scene fusion yeah kinematic scene soap fusion. scene fusion soup soup soups on the on the fusions so multiplayer coming soon but is this is the multiplayer coming soon the first thing that you started right at the beginning it is and i can tell you just a little bit about it um uh i've you know we've built multiplayer games um kind of with other projects in the past and you know i've done a lot of networking stuff and um there's certain things aspects of multiplayer that they're fun to do probably exactly once um and basically you kind of never really want to do them again they you know you 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 go okay i did that that was fun i learned stuff uh now i just want to build the damn game um so we're actually building a, a multiplayer system that uh simplifies a lot of the stuff that is you know some of it's really quite mundane and then some of the stuff is just a straight up dark art so it's um we we believe we actually have the most efficient network stack in the world um well, we so, tested uh, this, this is unity or unreal or anything it's um it'll be anything but it's going to have integrations with with various engines and the first integration is with unity so this is is this java based then if it's going to be anything no nope, it's all c sharp so basically um mm -hmm. you do everything in c sharp including your orchestration you it all your orchestration becomes part of your game code um you the uh, the objective is to have you come in with a, a basic knowledge of just unity and within half an hour to an hour uh be up and running with an online multiplayer game no, with that, you know come persistent on. server authoritative code no you you're talking about like a holy grail kind of thing well it's it's been uh 6 years in development so we're we're actually um we're not just starting it we're actually we're actually pretty far along. Um, but have you been able to get far along by leveraging the work that you've been doing off Scene Fusion? Well, yeah, because because Scene Fusion and, and uh, the multiplayer system actually have exactly the same problems to solve. So uh, we're building it once and kind of using it twice. Um, and 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 all those features that that we needed for Scene Fusion are perfect for multiplayer. Like, you know, you build your online server runtime, so you have your server authoritative code that you publish. Um, that's going to be locked. You need that to be version locked with whatever clients you have out there. And if our system doesn't update because we have new features or whatever, your stuff still has to work because you're not going to do those updates. So this actually handles that case, right? Because we've had to do this with Scene Fusion. Um, so there's all kinds of there's all kinds of niceties about it, right? You that that um, you know it you know you don't have to administer and secure servers. You don't have to you don't have to touch servers. Actually, you don't have to touch the network stack. You wouldn't want to because it's ridiculously efficient. Like by ridiculously efficient, we we send 3D transforms in 12 bits, um, or less, right? We we the the average compression rate we get is about 200 to one. Um, if you were to kind of compute what your your raw world snapshot would look like, it's it's almost good enough that you could do use a snapshot system for you know an RTS game. I was going to um, say, uh, is, is, what kind of games would be able to work? Uh, could I could I do a, a, a first person shooter, shooty shooty, twitch twitch, bang bang multiplayer game using this? Yeah, yeah. You just choose you choose the uh, update rate you want, so you can up, update it, say you know sixty hertz from the server. Um, PhysX is available if you want to use it server side. I was going to um, say to you, like, you could I, is this going to have proper physics in? Because we were playing about you know the scene that you the interview you're watching the other day uh with uh you know brian's in the chat now um for reign of darkness uh and how ty was saying he's reading that from scratch but he kind of like cheated with the um with, with it's not really uh physics with the with like the archery physics and stuff like that so yeah would i be able to use your um magical <laughs> mythical magical uh multiplayer <laughs> This just sounds too good to be true, but like with proper physics in there as well, like you know, firing um, a, a bow, an arrow, uh, and thing boinging off somewhere or ricocheting a bullet, or is that is that? I too could, much I could, I could give you a link that shows it working. <gasps> um, 
But if I did that, I think we would actually end up with 50 people in there, and we've never had it 50 people in there. Um, so it might be fun just to break our demo. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but if it but if it works, if it works, so much the better. And what's I was going to say? What's the most you can? If you, have you have you got into into trying to push it now? Um, what's the most? Which sorry? Of users, what's the most you of the like stress test that you have tried to push of, of connectivity on 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 this on this magic? Um, well, we've multiple? we've released a few kind of like simple web games using it, just kind of to test out various aspects of it, and um, you know we've seen couple hundred couple hundred concurrent on it so far right so that's that's the real world stuff our tests we've done we've done like hundreds hundreds of test clients per uh per instance like per per server authoritative room right so um it's it's kind of it's it's built to do uh work once so like if you want to you, you render out kind of your game state and then you have to serialize that um, and then you have to write that to the network, right? And the other people have to read it and deserialize it and display it. Um, we make it so that every piece of, of work that of processing that goes into that that effort only happens when it needs to happen. So you can actually use it so that you know effectively you can have this world and you can have um, uh, you know thousands and thousands of players connect to it, and each new player doesn't really cost you anything more in terms of in terms of um uh processing power because you know the system's smart enough to figure out what it needs to do oh come you give give uh, have you pushed where's this link because this just this so just... it's uh all right well, well we'll see what happens uh hopefully this <laughs> will will stand up to all the interested people so it's ruins the word ruins dot kinematic soup dot com all right Let's let's try this. Okay. Shall I push it? I'll put it in the chat. Uh, it sounds like Hero Engine. Hero Engine. I remember when Hero Engine first came. I was chatting with, with the developers of Hero Engine many years ago. Uh, it just was so many amazing things that it could have been, but it just, you know, uh, we are where we are now in twenty twenty. Oh, I cannot find. Oh, we've had the WW? We've had the HTTPS? We've had HTTPS? HTTPS, yeah. Somebody's in here without a name. He's running from me. Ruins. Who, who is that person? So you might notice a few things that are interesting about this demo when what you're in it. Oh, oh without, the, without the, all the Ws. Without all the Ws. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Chris. It's without all the Ws. Irish man, or Irish John, there you are. So you might notice that there's some destruction happening in here. And to your name. Messy destruct destructo. Okay. Death so just so you know, it's, to... it's a death match. I thought we it is a death match. Targeting each other and, and, and being nice to each other. Now we're robots. Holy, what are we up to? Nine players so far, right? So it seems to be handling this okay, oh, which oh, makes me oh, I shot someone. makes I me pretty happy. Now the problem is the browser doesn't like lots and lots of 3D geometry, oh, so it's going to get chunky. It's, so... it's killing everyone's ears. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, mute. You might want to mute it because it's 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 built to be a bit showy, um, but it's just saying, hey, uh, look what we can do. <laughs> um, right. That's that's. Oh, I'm getting the main... too hot. This is like Mech Warrior thing. It kind of actually, it's more like Hawken. I like to think of it a little more like Hawken. I really liked Hawken. I like Mech Warrior too. Is Haw Hawken, Hawken the was... one that was you were um, the Egyptian ones? Haw Hawken was the uh, sort of like fast-paced first-person shooter mech game that Meteor Entertainment uh, kind of just cratered into the ground, um, and uh, it was a great it was it was a great game, but it had terrible matchmaking, <laughs> right? Because you just you join these join these levels and you'd get get these people who are way too skilled and you just get totally stomped right so well, what year was that because i remember the mech <sighs> one where it was very old uh, and it was like you had everyone looked weird in egyptian looking uh back one where you're very old yeah i don't know i can't remember which one that one would, would be is it there's a jump button oh did i kill somebody i don't know one kill. I've got one kill and two deaths. Yeah, so some guys just got focused down there. Oh, that's too bad. 
Oh, I no, somebody stole my kill. Messy destructors getting hit. This is kind of fun. This is this is now this is the way to do a stream, right? You know, you're streaming and then everybody gets to join in. Now, if you hit the the B key, so hit B. B. And uh, ignore what it. Oh, so who won? Game ends. So we'll do another thing. Wins. Yeah. So uh, B is basically showing you the bandwidth that this thing is using to do the the experience you're seeing. Um, oh, yeah. And it's in bytes per second, so you multiply it by eight to get kind of kilobits per second. Um, now, uh, you know, it's it's there, there's quite a bit of stuff. So on the lower left, there's how many objects. Those are dynamic objects that are actively being synced. So if you kind of look at the, the bandwidth rate and then you look at the number of objects being synced, you can kind of figure out kind of how many how many bytes for per object. And we're in a web, um, we're in a web browser and we're getting uh, up to 40 FPS. You are in a web browser, yes. We also have an HD version of this, which can fix that 40 FPS problem you're having and get it down to a proper 10. But uh, you know, this this is at least something that I think most people's hardware can can sort of run. the 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 native build is obviously much better, right? It runs smooth on some some. It runs smooth on mobile, actually. This one's smooth on this. So you're you're trying to turn it. Let me. How do I put the volume down on my on my little doo doo? One second. Uh, the volume's on for everyone just... else, but for me it's a little bit louder. Let me, let me, there we go, it's better. So, um, this is used. Game Owens Justin wins. <laughs> That's not rigged. How do we hide the scoreboard? Oh, uh, oh, what is the key for that? Is it tab or is it. I actually. Oh my god! I keep forgetting. I pushed uh, the. I can see everyone's names now. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a key that actually kind of lets you see through stuff. We have that just so that you can. Wow, well, we are up to twelve players. That's not bad. It's not a bad CCU level. Um, but this is this is like for for the the, the networking tool or the networking uh, uh, framework. It's this is still pretty pretty much child's play, right? There's two Yolans. Yolan, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, we're up to fourteen players now. There's also keys to adjust the quality. Um, I think it's the uh, greater than and less than key will adjust. Have quality I just inverted my, my keys, my mouse? Yeah, I I invert. This is this is not a game, and actually, even as a demo, it's a work in progress, <laughs> right? It has to. We're gonna do a little bit of a. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit more uh, decorating. Um, and the, the the style may look familiar to you. It's because Cynthia's actually helped us with this. <laughs> um, you know, because we're not artists and they are, so they make made these awesome little mech models and stuff. Um, and uh, we went through and kind of animated them and, and got everything working and and implemented this this partial game from it with with all this wonderful destruction, which is actually really quite fun. This is so much fun. I can't hear the stream for my local sound. Turn the turn your local sound down. <laughs> Yeah, I better mute mute your tabs because it does, it does. Uh, it's loud. It's there's a lot of DACA going on. Oh my god! You see on the left hand side where it says damage and it's going up percentage. I thought it was health, and I was like, oh my health is only at two percent. Oh no! I'm gonna play soccer with somebody's uh, disembodied legs here. Anybody <laughs> want to play? <laughs> Guess what wins? So I can actually kick this person. Yeah, you can, and, and it's just, like, this is this is a hard sync, right? Like, it's syncing everything to the uh, presentation layer, except for maybe the particle effects, Wait, right? So, so even, so, even the, like, that disembodied head, or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's synced. synced. Whatever you see is happening is happening for everybody. I heard mute tabs. That was obvious. I is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> and the people in chat are still waiting to know who's won. I'm sorry. Uh, I've just got been distracted because I. Yeah, all right. I'll I'll <laughs> shut this down. <laughs> how the hell did that? You, did you do that? How did you throw that at me? How do you pick that up? How did you do that? Yeah, you can, you can, you can chuck debris around at people. It you damages know, them. You can bring what, you can bring buildings button? down what's on people. What's the button for throwing debris? Oh, there isn't. You just shoot it and it goes flying. <laughs> Oh my word! 
I'm st- <laughs> everyone's shooting at me as I'm standing there looking at a rock, pushing all of the keys, going, how do I move this rock? I want to move this rock. Oh, my word. I, okay. I, I didn't intend to like totally hijack the stream with this. I just thought I just thought people might might appreciate knowing kind of the stuff we're working on and what's coming. Well, it's real. You really are working on it. You. Yeah, it it does stuff. We've actually released some games with it. Like they're the we have done a few little web games. Uh, actually, all the games have been basically web yeah. web based. We worked with another studio to do a a sequel to. Um, so it's actually uh, close to being released then. Uh, yeah, it's oh, it's getting my, pretty close. It's, piece, it's lots of documentation my... work and figuring out a few last last minute issues. Oh. Um, but but so, uh, how, yeah, how it's, far it's... away are you from 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 letting other people play with this? Um, well, some people are right now, um, and they're they're very gracious, nice people that you know can tolerate bugs and <laughs> and a few things. Um, Love bugs. and and. Yeah, bugs. I think one might be in your stream right now. He's 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 using it. Um, and uh, uh, you know, we're looking we're looking. What I'm hoping it'll it will have it released sometime in the first half of next year. Oh, amazing, amazing. Um, so, okay, <laughs> woohoo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Did Iris just win? Um, I've had to, I've had to alt tab out of it. I can see it on the stream still. Uh, you know what? I'm, let me let me go back on the browser so I can. See. I'm looking at a wall. Um, <laughs> hang on, let me turn around so I can see what's going on. Uh, and then I'm going to Alt Tab. What's the where's the C button? Uh, C. Oh, I mean not there. C. There we go. So now I can yeah. go out of it. And, and oh, hang on. Oh, oh. come on. Alt Tab. Yeah. There we go. Alt Alt. I think uh, is the focus the focus button. So. Uh, I'm gonna announce the winner. Destruction is amazing. I know the destruction is amazing. It, it, it's not a real game. It's not a real game. It, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, I love that. I got a kill by dropping a building on someone. Such fun. <laughs> I think I think everyone's just given up on the stream now. They're just gonna be they're just gonna be playing this for the next six hours. All right. So, drum roll for first lucky winner. To, um, I did not. I, I just wrote in Discord. Is there any chance we could give away? You know, for two people for one year, and he's like, even better. I'll give you three for uh, three winners for a credit grand each. He's like, no way, no way. So you lucky badgers, the first lucky badger. Remember, you need to be a follower, otherwise you don't actually win. Your name just gets called out. First winner is Afix. Afix. Didn't you win? What did you win the other day? You won something the other day, Afix. You won something yesterday, didn't you, Afix? Congratulations. Afix won Dungeon Architect. Justin, last night on the stream, I believe Afix won Dungeon Architect, which means Afix and, and, and uh, one of his lovely friends will be able to, to to take advantage. So if Afix generates the dungeon, then everyone else gets synced and everyone else in his team doesn't actually need to have Dungeon, dungeon Architect be working on the, on the thing together. That's genius. Yeah, I guess that would be true. Potentially true anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know how Dungeon Architect works under the hood. It may have extra things it, it puts in there. But... That could do, couldn't it? So the next winner is Author Chris. Author Chris, congratulations. Unfortunately, there isn't an asset store that you could go on to give these guys uh, rave reviews, but uh, you've got a, um, a a section of your web of your website where people talk about how awesome you are that they use your stuff. So mm -hmm. if any of you who've won go on to use this in the game that you're making. I uh, want to leave some uh, feedback, testimonials for for Kinematic Soup. By all means, the Discord, I'll put another link to their Discord in the chat. The last winner is Irish John. Oh my God. We opened up the raffle again because he didn't, he wasn't there first time around. And I said, look, I'm not going to do any more rounds. It's just going to be one set of people in. So I'll open it up again for you to do. And Iris John was one of the many people who got back in. Uh, congratulations. Three amazing winners to quite possibly. Um, it is, I'm going to say, one of the most unique things I've ever seen. If not the most unique thing I've ever seen. Because remember, everyone in chat, remember something. 
that will be with you for the rest of your lives. You could have one person with Unreal, one person with Unity, and these guys have worked out how you can export from one to the other. And it's crazy, but forget the lighting, as Will Justin said, you could actually make your scenes in Unreal, all of you together, working in Unreal on Windows, you make it all look pretty, and then go, boop, export it to Unity, uh, because you actually found it easier to work on your scene in Unreal than you did on Unity, and then you add your lighting and all the rest of it, and add your scripts and the rest of it in there. So you, you're, you could do crazy things with it. Um, happy holidays to everyone, now let's make some Exactly. It is, it's incredible. Will Justin, you, you, my friend, have actually made the impossible possible. I have to say. Now, we, we do try and do some, some, you know, new and unique things here. So and it's, it seems like it's been working out so far. Hopefully it works in like in Linux. Uh, well, it works in all operating systems that uh, Unity supports. It says on their website. Yeah, it should work. Should work as as long as yeah, um, as long as Mono supports sockets, right? That's that's the only, the only, uh, uh, the only thing where things can go wrong, right? Is if if there's a platform difference uh, in C sharp, because the whole whole plugin is is C sharp um, on Unity. I wonder if it works together with Umotion Pro to make animation too. Um, well, that's um, if if one person was was doing the animations, you'd have to uh, once he's finished, you'd have to sync that animation file with your source yeah. control. Yeah, usually you you would you would do that. Um, I mean, there you could also write an extension. So Scene Fusion has a, an extension mechanism. Um, we've written extensions for Editor XR, for example. So there's these these files that you can look at, these source code files that actually use an API that Scene Fusion provides to allow you to just sync data in any way you like. Um, so, so if it, you know, most plugins aren't just going to work out of the box. Yeah. Um, you know, just because. You know they all operate differently within within the editor anyway, and um, but but that doesn't mean that you couldn't actually write an extension uh, to to take care of it. And sometimes, like in the case of Gaia, you'll you'll want to go in and you'll want to add an event system to Gaia, and then you'll use the Scene Fusion API to replicate the events, right, to send the information the event contains on the other side, and then decode it and generate the same event. And and um, and uh, you know it's a a little bit of work, but but it's not. It's accessible, and we made it so that you can actually do do these extensions for these plugins. I'm. I want to sit. You got. Wait, I'm going to go to your website. You have you got? <laughs> I went to go to your website. Alt tabbed back in, and I've just find that everyone's been shooting at me while I've been away. You all dirty <laughs> little buggers. I have to say, uh, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Doing that kind of stuff. Can I get an exclamation mark scene fusion in chat, please? Give me an exclamation mark scene fusion in chat. Because uh, these guys need all of the scene, all the exclamation marks in the world. So if I go to resources on your website, uh, you've got getting started guide, troubleshooting guide, intro. What's for 2D? Uh, Fair Two D. Where's Fair Two D? Video. Oh yeah, we had um, Fair Two D is a, a plugin. A, a long time ago, we were doing um, uh, extensions for plugins, kind of when people requested them. Um, and that was that was one of the ones that we built support for. And I think it's it's really quite out of date now. Um, so it would probably have to be modified if anybody actually decided to use Fair Two D. I don't think Fair Two D is even even um, active anymore. That's not, one of the dangers, isn't it? You're sitting there, you, you put effort into to making something. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's there's been some cases, in particular when, when kind of people are, are bigger teams or something, well, we can put some effort in. And um, what we're probably going to do is, is transition a bit because it's it takes a lot of effort. Like we, we when, when people ask for an extension, which they do sometimes, um, it's a lot of effort for us. And we actually never make that money back with the with the current, you know, the current model. 
So we're, we're, we're looking at introducing a more enterprise style model for kind of the bigger studios that say, okay, yeah, I need some custom development of this or customizations. Um, the big thing we had to get finished first was bringing Scene Fusion to Unreal, and that happened basically this summer. So, um, you know, now we're looking at kind of the next the next phase of, of the plugin and how we deal with it from a business standpoint. Since, since it's only relatively, you know, pretty damn new, I mean, the summer only just finished and now we're at Christmas. Um, how, how, how big has the uptake been for, for Unreal users? Um, it's pretty good. Um, I, I think since we launched in the summer, there's there's been uh, well over a thousand users there. So it's wow. it's um, you know it, as soon as you go in the Epic Marketplace, it's really quite good. The website, like our website, it's there, but you know if not as many people have really have known about us because we've been so R and D focused for the last while. Um, but as soon as we went in the Epic Marketplace, yeah, we're getting getting quite a few signups and. We're making changes to try and get you know get the conversion rates improved and all that kind of stuff because they still have to you know, they go to the epic marketplace they click a link they end up on our website and you know people can find, kind of fall off at every stage so there's a bunch of changes we're making to the unreal plugin so that it can just be installed directly from their marketplace get some nice stickiness going on get them in once they click it yeah. they're not allowed to leave until they actually gone through the whole uh pipeline and Gone in. I mean, what we, what we find as well is like people kind of pick this up and then they'll use it for, they might use it for a week, they might use it for six months, um, uh, but they, they, they typically kind of, you know, pick it up, pay for it while they use it, and then when the project's done, they, they you know, they stop paying and, and um, they're, they're, the, the cycles aren't very, that aren't very long. They're like months long where, where people are kind of using this oh, stuff. So you can... Uh, where, so is, is that so? If I had, if you paid for the year, that's like you can't you can't pause it, stop and start it. Yeah, you pay for the year, um, but the, if you're paying for the year, it's because you have probably have multiple projects, yeah. right? And you're just gonna the seats are flexible. You just pay for a seat, and then lots of people can use it. Um, so so if you if you know you have four teams, then you can buy so many seats, and the seats will just kind of for whoever uses whoever is online at the time oh no so i thought it was like you know tied into a username so like, you're like okay you've got uh you know two two users all right now you you're you've used my seat and you will always be tied to you and i can't let anyone else use that seat but you're saying the the account itself has got two two seats and it could be anyone who's logged in at the time can can use it yeah yeah. So if you have a team of four people, but only two people are using it, you buy two seats. So today it could be Jim and Kenny, and tomorrow it's Jim and Mavis. Yeah. That's amazing. Because that was my other concern. I was, I was going to get to that. Uh, kill, kill. I'm very curious about this. It seems good. Would it make more sense to punt it on a personal server that costs the software at 50 bucks? It comes to more than my Unity Pro a year. Uh, well... Um, to be honest, I see no benefit of Unity Pro, uh, and I've had some people ask me what's the what is the benefit of using Unity Pro. Um, I think the only the only thing about using Unity Pro is when you're releasing your game and you start earning over a certain amount of revenue, um, that you start being forced into to different licenses. I wouldn't buy Unity Pro. I wouldn't spend any money whatsoever on it. Um, scene fusion to be honest if I went back to the the page where it had pricing duh, duh, duh. if I was only going to have two people because because now we know there's two two seats right of two active people at a time uh, 50 bucks a month right uh, or we're going in it was 500 a year so if it's 50 bucks a month and you're going you know what we're we're working on a big scene because can I can I just be a little bit I don't know if you know, this is cheeky or not Justin but I'm being pragmatic at this point yeah you've got um, average Joe in his bedroom which I call it like you said yesterday we were saying yesterday is the bedroom program this is this is the 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 pedigree of the British uh, bedroom programmer uh, you know the the, the brothers uh, who made uh, jetpack and the brothers who made 
Dizzy, Dizzy Egg, you know, the ones who went on to do, you know, who, Code Masters, started off in your bedroom. Rare started off in the, in the bedroom. Your GTAs, you know, they started off making stuff in the, in the bedroom, right? They don't have thousands of dollars. Yep. But they don't need thousands of dollars. You don't need thousands of dollars because you get two licenses, 2,000 objects in your hierarchy in the sea. This here has got 8,000. Uh, well, now we went up to 900 and 9,018 because you started, you started adding stuff in. <laughs> we started adding stuff in yeah. while we were doing this. But, you know, we're around 9,000. You don't need to have 9,000 objects in your scene. And even if you did, because, you know, this is not... This wouldn't work really well in your game if you're if you were going frame all this stuff in without wanting to optimize okay you'll be using uh mesh combining you'd be um doing lots of different tricks to basically optimize so if you're working on this you'd go you know what we'll work we're focusing on this area here as the team and that's all you need in the scene as the team working on it okay save it out then work on this part even have them as sub scenes okay so that you don't all need to be working on them at the same time and then the person who's the main uh, you know owner of the of the project can then merge them all afterwards that's one solution if this is too pricey for you in your bedroom to be working on it and you think you can, can do more than 2000 others is you've got lots of scenes so you, you're working on lots of different scenes and each scene's got a smaller part or call me crazy right but the price of going out to the movies and, eat, and eating a pizza is one month's subscription for scene fusion okay if you're working on something generally you're under the 2000 object ra ration that you've got but one month you think you're going to be over the two months ration get a, get a 50 dollar license for one month and then after that one month go back to using the 2000 you don't have to be tied in to paying for this like uh, for the year if you're not going to use it which is a problem i've had in the past with subscriptions for texture websites uh like i was subscri subscribed to uh mega uh what's it called mega splat where it was called um mega you know the the thing mega it, scams. yeah mega scams, yeah. the thing that takes all your money and then and then goes oh you know what let's go with uh, with epic and give it all away for free so um <laughs> Make you make you really um, be happy with the life decisions that you make at the time. So um, you don't need to be tied in for a year. You just if you're working on a project and in a month you're going to be needing more than two thousand, get it for the month. It's really it's common sense. But do they have a reason behind the high cost server side? Are you cool, cool? You need to go back and watch the entire stream, mate, because this is years worth of development behind it so one thing you need to recoup the cost of development it's you don't work for six years building something releasing go okay my running cost from the day we went live is you know a hundred bucks a month no it's you need to recoup the cost of development of, of what your product is and you also need to be having the cost of supporting the development for updating whenever unity decides to make a new version and break everything. One real makes new versions. So you you actually have your staff costs. Unfortunately, they can't turn on and off staff costs a month. They can't fire somebody and then ask him to come back six months later because Unity did a new version. It'll be nice if things work that way, but unfortunately, they can't turn off the the servers that this cl this cloud stuff is is working on and turn it back on again because people are using it. So yeah, uh, there's a lot of cost behind this that i'm wondering how they can actually turn a profit with their with the actual uh price structure but i'm glad it's not 500 quid a month you know what i mean it's a 50 quid a month for two users you could turn it on and off as you go so it is yep. effectively this is a multiplayer game this is a multiplayer game inside the editor uh, and uh kill kill and anyone else who's skeptical, I really strongly suggest, and I implore you, go over exclamation mark scene fusion, get a free license for two users. Uh, two thousand. You're not going to exceed two thousand objects uh, 
regularly and even if you are you can chop it down into smaller parts and focus on in the team working on this bit here or the team working with you if you've got a larger scene of 2000 objects honestly you're not all going to be working in the same area at once because that's that's you know, it's unless you're Cinti Studios or uh, working on a, on a commercial game that might not happen and if you are doing that hopefully you've got the budget to pay to afford fifty dollars a month yeah i mean professional the, the professional studios kind of don't even question it right like when they're yeah. when they when it's something where you know oh well we put two people in the scene that basically cuts you know that cuts our our uh, miles our time to milestone down by about you know at least on the the, the level design side by about 3x it's like okay <laughs> right um so it's it's you know our our pricing structure actually has changed a few times like we did actually have a five dollar tier that kind of it just boosted the the object limit up um there was a time when the 25 dollar tier actually had a, a cap of thirty five thousand objects in the scene wow um and when we released unreal this year we just said oh screw it let's include include both engines just <laughs> make scene fusion one thing one price and, yeah. and and let people run with that and what we'll probably do is we'll be assessing like over time we just assess kind of how how effective the free tier is for people um and if we find that yeah a lot of people just kind of slam into the the limit and they are small studios then we tend to bump the free tier limit up right so we've done that in the past I think we started at 500 and we went up to a thousand objects now we're 2000 objects so um you know we get we get uh isn't is that uh, causing you a stress on your servers though because all this stuff's sitting in your cloud um, well, I mean, the, the 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 servers are spun up and down, um, kind of as needed. At least there, some of them are. Some of them have to run all the time because they run, you know, the database and and all the other stuff that kind of supports. But um, so there's there's always a, a base cost that that we pay, and then we basically add servers kind of with demand, and then kind of shut them down when when demand when demand comes down, and we we try and optimize as much as we can there. Um, but uh you know the there is there is like we have to use high ram servers um you know we can't use the little ones really we have to use the big ones and the reason why is because you know people so some of these some of these scenes even if they don't have terrain they can actually have so many components and so many properties and like arrays of stuff that gets synced and it just it can it, you can eat up gigabytes and gigabytes of ram for for a scene file just so that you know you can keep it being dynamic so so they end up there's there's actually you know pretty sizable hardware behind um, a session, um, and there are people who have sessions that are thousand tens of thousands of seconds long, um, on a pretty regular basis, right? They literally open up a session and they they don't close their game engine, they just leave the session running for days. Um, so it, it it's you know it, there there's there's things that that we end up with with the yeah, like. We end up with these servers that are just sitting there. They're kind of a, a big cost, but people are people like to use it that way, or they're using it that way for a reason. So they're kind of using. Do you like, does it not time out? Do you not have like a safety thing? Like if he's if he's left it on and he and he went to bed, and then he went to the pub, and then he went on holiday, and he left it open, uh, and you're like, what? Well, you left it open, and you went on holiday for a week. Well, we don't we don't have one on our side because um, at least on the Unis Unity side we're lucky because Unity just crashes. And it's left <laughs> right, and, yeah, good and, old memory uh, leaks. I love you yeah. so much. <laughs> yeah, and and somebody's asking if we have the 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 option for a locally hosted hosted version. It's like yeah, we do we do have a, a LAN version, um, and we just engage with people individually if they want the LAN version. So it's you know usually educators or movie studios or something that that need the LAN copy um and and uh yeah my, my, you know, the, i know like where would work before they would have for ip you know issues and uh, uh and data protection and stuff and all that kind of you know they'd be yeah. like, no, it's, got, it's got to be land you can't can't be sticking there in the cloud uh yeah. Google was saying i'm glad you're looking to other options uh are we financing we very much appreciate more object oriented oriented cheaper package uh, he says he's been watching your assets via Facebook ads for the past year or so. Well, you've been retargeted <laughs> well and truly kill kill. Uh, Keith Rack says, how many people do you have in a studio when you have several people working on the same scene at the same time, assuming the scenes aren't divided by content? Oh, well, probably. It's probably, you know, a team of five will start to get 
start to get value out of this. It, it there there's like like the thing is, scene fusion is not it's not something you're going to use on every project, right? Yeah. Sometimes you only have one level designer. Uh, sometimes uh, you have you know a couple of level designers, but you have so many different levels, and you have different designers tackling different levels all the time. Scene fusion when it was originally envisioned was like okay. We're building basically this multiplayer system, and it's gonna it's gonna simplify building any type of game, including MMOs. Um, but MMOs are kind of the big value one. So, what extra, what kind of killer feature could we could we provide that would allow people to build these massive worlds? Um, and in those cases, you would have you know you would have multiple level designers. You would have probably you know a relatively small set of very large levels, and that's where Scene Fusion really shines. Huge, huge levels. You know, you have a team of at least two people working on them, and and um, you know, you get you get a ton of value out of it that way, right? So, um, so yeah, it's it's there. There's there's an aspect of of you know, people of course you know talk about the cost and stuff. Like there's there's only so many people who will pay for this, right? Yeah. And and they are you know they are the people who have a good need for it, and they will get a ton of value out of it because. You know, if they can work three times as fast, right? And you're paying somebody five, six thousand dollars a month in salary, um, and they're done their work in one month instead of three, right? And all it cost you to 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 get that was paying, you know, uh, paying for scene fusion for for those for for the month, right? Then that's you know, it's, there's just no math there. It's just yeah. like, of course you'd do that, right? So, um, I mean, that that's kind of the thinking that that we have, and and uh, you know, we 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 try and make it so that at least like this thing kind of you know it 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 covers its its costs as it goes, and and you know we haven't really promoted it as much, right? Like people have been seeing it on Facebook ads, but it's you know it's the Facebook reach isn't huge yet, and um, you know it's it's something that's actually growing, and and we haven't had you know if if we're a, mostly an R and D team and we haven't been focusing on marketing, we just haven't been you know telling the world about it that much. So it's still, still very much in the growth, in the growth phase. Well, I think the entire world needs to know about this, but I'm scared because then they'll start, everyone, everyone would start eating up all your bandwidth and then I'll, I'll be like, get off, it's mine. Leave me alone. Uh, and, then, and then somebody would hack, would, would, would do something stupid like me and end up taking down all of the servers. Um, yeah. I, I guarantee That's that I, I, I would end up doing something stupid like trying to sync uh, train over uh, 60k by 60k uh, and chop it up into lots of pieces and, and then sync it a million times a second because I wrote it in the code. Uh, <laughs> so so I, I'm called the messy coder for a reason. Uh, it's not good. It's not clean. It, it's not nice. Um, yeah. I mean, kill kill. I mean, you, you jest about you know uh, poor noodle eating indies, but actually, it's it's a very good phrase. I mean, the indie. In the uh, we said we said this with um, a few people actually on the stream when you interviewed them this, in this twelve days leading up to Christmas, you've got your your bedroom programmer amateur, um, which is uh, you know two thousand free. Uh, I think is very generous to be honest, and the fifty dollars random when they need it is within a budget of a bedroom uh, indie because that seriously you know like it's. It's the it's a price going out to the cinema for a couple and, and eating some food, in in certain countries. So for the for an entire month for two people working on a massive scene, you can actually blitz through and get it done and not need to have uh, scene fusion after that on your project, depending on what you're working on. If you're working something small, if you're an indie, indie doesn't necessarily mean that you know it's, you've got no money or you know everything's free. I think it's actually well within the budget of an indie, which is. It's bizarre seeing something of this power uh, with that pricing, and the fact that it's also debating different uh, price structures as well. I'm I am flabbergasted. I honestly am flabbergasted. Right? Uh, people in chat saying, "Yeah, it's a bargain at that price." It, but personally, um, my wife probably wouldn't agree because she doesn't, you know, <laughs> not allowed to spend money. But yeah, I really do. I really do believe this is this is a bargain. Um, and if people are saying about making multiple scenes, you know, for if you're using something like sector where you're slicing up your terrain into multiple scenes exactly you've got multiple scenes you don't need them all to be joined up in the, in the, everyone on the same session 
uh, and all of them synced in the hierarchy. Like I said before, you could have uh, sub scenes and one person's synced and the other person's not, and you're not eating up into that 2,000 um, items, objects in the hierarchy. That That's another nice thing about multi-scene games. You can have two people working on one scene and two other people working on a different scene, and you're still within your 2,000 budget. What counts as an object of kinematic suit? So an object is anything that's in the hierarchy. So um, this, just in this prop path here that we put in, yeah. Oh, look, it's synced now. Is that the one that we dropped in that I gave to you? Um, no, no, no I don't. I, I'm not sure. I oh, don't think is. so. It is. Look, because it's, it's still, got twelve of the twelve inside it. Oh yeah, yeah, but it wouldn't show up on my side, right? Because you gave it to me. Well, it's green. Um, yeah, oh, there's the SM prop path. So there, it's yeah. it's deleted now because you had it. But yeah, um, it's uh. Yeah. uh we, we we have to look at that that particular aspect okay. I, I probably did something wrong really but but is this two objects now or is this one object in the same so that'd now, be two objects so right so it's got a line it's got a line in the hierarchy so it, so it's it counts as an object so anything with a line in it so this person here he's very expensive in scene fusion uh because he's got lines for his for his bones uh, uh, and I think you're going down. So yeah, I have to I have to check and see if the actual bones will will count. I mean, there's an easy easy way to test, right? So so just delete the character. Oh yeah, and see um, like it's removed here. Like, like just count, just just count roughly how right. many there is there. That looks like I don't know, uh, thirty. Yeah, so we <laughs> let's say thirty. So this is at nine nine thousand and eighteen. If it goes down by one, <laughs> yeah, well, then we know, right? Okay, it went down by. Uh, 80. Okay, yeah. So if I put it back, Control Z. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's quite a bit. So it's just the Cinti asset, right? They all the characters are are uh, skins that you just enable on the one uh, on the one kind of bone set, right? I yeah, don't think the, most people would this, have. Well, this set this up is from the Mechanim. This you inherit. I think anything that's got Mechanim character, we're going to inherit all of these bones. Yeah. Um, so, if anyone's like you know stressing out about that, don't sink in your characters uh, until the end. Yeah, and there's a way. There's actually um, API calls you can have, so you can choose some stuff that you wouldn't want synced. So, like, oh, let's really? say, you know, yeah. So, so you can um, uh, you can write an editor script, and you can tell Scene Fusion, <gasps> hey, anything with this component, don't sync it. No way. So what will happen? Awesome. What will happen is you, the host, would see it because the host loads the original level, right? Yeah. Um, but no green dot will show up beside those items that are not synced. When other people join in, they will not receive those, right? So, is whatever those dots were, they just basically would be visible. Oh. Um, and that's that'll probably change with Scene Fusion Two, where um, Scene Fusion Two will have everybody actually load the same scene file, um, and that means that things that aren't synced basically. Would be in a, in a kind of unsynced sit state for mm. for uh, everybody, right? So you'd have to have good communication to figure out like who should touch those things and uh, who's responsible for checking everything in. But um, it at least is is one way to kind of control parts that you may not want to have modified in the session, like to have, to kind of give you an opportunity to set up that gatekeeper to say, okay, yeah, no, we're 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 done this part, and we don't want anybody touching it, and we're basically gonna like cordon off these objects right so um so that's that's kind of how we envision that that working right and um we'll, we'll you know in time we'll probably have an even better system for doing it i still mean at the moment to be able to just drag on a, a component here and say don't sync uh would be great because i go okay i've exceeded my 2000 limit i've got a load of stuff that i'm not syncing and i don't have to delete it from so i could actually could I put it in a parent? Like if I had here in the props, could I put the don't sync on this props parent and then all of the children within props wouldn't sync? Uh, yes, that's that's how it'll work. It'll basically it'll basically like cut that whole thing off. See that's that's how you get around the your, your two thousand limit in chat, everyone. It's in there freaking yourselves out. Uh, that's actually a really manageable way. 
So you'd basically, look, chat, um, <laughs> I shouldn't say this because it's encouraging you to find ways of not paying for $50 a month, but it, <laughs> it's $50 a month. Come on, when you need it, pay it. Um, so if make the person, the host has got um, loads of stuff here, you basically put your script, put your component script on, on this, you say don't sync, don't sync, don't sync, don't sync, and uh, work on these parts up here. When you finish on these up here, put the script so you don't sync these anymore, and then you start syncing these bottom ones, on and off, um, and then yeah. you're within your 2000. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could totally do something something like that. I mean, really, the the the, the thing you would do is you'd, you'd probably like build your level out and, and optimize things as you were satisfied with your zones, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it, you know, you can actually keep within a, within a 2000 object budget for even a scene with this level of complexity pretty, pretty easily. Um, it'll just be, you know, an optimized final, final scene kind yeah. of, you'll, you'll, you'll make final parts as you go. And like I um, said earlier, you, you could, um, in most projects, you'd be combining the meshes on the most complex stuff. Yeah, because uh, you'd yeah. be doing that anyway for optimization. Yeah, and besides, once we launch the multiplayer system, things things will probably change again. So, um, you know, scene fusion might take a take a different and interesting form at that time. So we'll just have to wait and see. And was it done, Kojo? Like most things in life, you can choose to pay for convenience or spend time to avoid costs. And which is this is a very important point. Most organizations and and. Uh, unfortunately, I work for one as well who does the same thing. Oh, yeah, fortunately, unfortunately, um, it's actually easier to pay for longer contracts so that the finance department uh, and the and the accounts don't have to worry about f like paying an invoice every month. So yeah. it's actually easier to go. Well, you know what? I'm going to pay you for a two year license, even though we're only going to use it for six months because. The internal HR cost, or you know, the human cost of doing that effort, is makes it more expensive. Even though you go, well, you only pay for six months. Well, actually, now Dolores and Kevin have to sort out all these invoices, uh, whereas they we could be doing doing something else. So yeah, it's a convenience thing. And if you're uh, in a in a team, all these like hints and tips of how to save out from keeping within your two thousand budget, it's entirely stuff that the bedroom hobbyists would be using to be able to continue to use uh, scene fusion on a longer time period without needing to upscale um, if you were a studio working this you wouldn't even the thought really wouldn't even be in your mind because it's more of an effort to add those scripts on or trying to find ways to keep yourself under the 2000 limit then it really just pay an extra 50 dollars a month or 500 a year and you've just covered yourself so you don't have to sit there trying to every every time you go to a scene or how can I stay within my two thousand budget? Um, so yeah, uh, in that way, I don't feel bad about telling people little ideas of how they can stay within your budget because really, if someone's going to pay the money, they're going to pay it anyway, aren't they, Justin? Yeah, I mean, like if if people find a way to stay in the budget, that's fine. Um, you know, they could probably write scripts to do it too if they wanted to, right? And and you know, if it helps, it helps, and and. Um, Sooner or later, they're, they'll they'll be successful enough that they'll probably say, "Well, you know, we'll just maybe it makes sense to just <laughs> just pay for it, and then we'll go." Thank you very much, because you know we've been paying a long time to open our wallets to to kind of build it, so it's, it's nice to see the money start to flow back eventually. But uh, yeah, it's it's um it's interesting because it just the the asset store model in general is kind of I think skewed things where I think people don't really like people. Everybody's undervaluing themselves. Like Adam Goodrich was keeps this is his biggest gripe with the asset store. If if yeah. everyone tries to go to the bottom, it try it basically it forces the new asset who comes to the store to go, Oh, so the average price is twenty bucks for something that I spent six months working on. Yeah. And then you're gonna sell a sell a thousand copies of it or or, or maybe less, right? Like yeah. less. And then that's and that's basically, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of like okay, well, there's there's no actual business there, and how do you how do you build something big, right? Like how do you build something big and high quality, um, or build something very very complex that actually is is very high effort? It's like it, there's no business case on, with the asset store in its current state. And I've talked to Adam about this too, right? Like we were both uh, we we met uh, we met actually uh, in like 2015, I think, and and we're we're chatting quite a bit about kind of the asset store and and um, I even met with Unity and said, you know, like, 
it, it's great, but there needs to be more options for people to really like build a business there. Yeah. Like we, I'd be more than happy to give give Unity like a chunk of cash for the exposure, um, as long as I could go on there and then you know have have a business model that makes sense because you know Scene Fusion it's going to work for every project. No, is it intended to? No, absolutely not. It's intended for you know people who are building like big complex scenes and they have a team to do it, um, and that just isn't everyone, right? Um, and, and, you know, the indies, there's definitely indies who like two people can, can build a complex scene together. Um, they're, they're kind of in that, that they're kind of caught in the middle a little bit because, you know, they're, they're used to this, this system where, okay, we get all these, these tools and they're, they're, they're cheap and stuff. And then it, it just, you know, they kind of, they kind of start to think that their own work isn't worth that much yeah. either, I think. So, and it's just not true. Like, it's just, it, you know, it, it, if you... If you spend like you could, you could spend a million dollars building an asset, <laughs> right? Um, and it's like, well, how do you get that back? So let's say, you, let's say that asset's going to get you a thousand sales on the asset store. Well, guess what? Just to get it back, you need to sell for a minimum of a thousand bucks, right? Um, and and but you know that doesn't take into account the fact that so you had to open up your wallet and weren't sure that it would even succeed in the first place. So really, you'd probably want to get two thousand bucks sale and you know the indies wouldn't be able to get that at all so it's always that the, you know you have to find the happy medium you have to give people something for free right something that's usable for free and it's good enough and then you have to keep it relevant um but you also have to to try and and uh you know scale up and and grow and, and generate revenue from it right so uh, Kyo, Kyo, saying you sell lower you sell more actually it's it's it can sometimes become false economy because uh sell lower sell more then you've got more support and if you sell lower the actual the real the, the reality is you reduce the entry the bar for for your customers so let's say uh dungeon architect is a great example okay yesterday so it's on sale at the moment 47 whatever because it's normal price is 95 bucks right um kind of keep, keep mixing up dollars and euros um, so a, 90, a $95 asset, somebody who goes to the asset store and his budget is around $20, back, $20 maximum isn't going to pick up um, Dungeon Architect because you know it's a $95 close to $100 asset on the asset store. However, somebody who actually really wants to have a, a powerful tool to procedurally generate any type of level who's making a real game would look at that and go, $95 for something that can procedurally generate me my levels any type of game I want to make and would probably t cost me six months to a year's worth of my own development to get to that stage $95 is very cheap it's a very cheap investment for the for the outcome so if you load it down to 20 the person who bought it at 20 doesn't really have let's be honest maybe the same technical knowledge as the person who's actively going there for the more expensive assets because he feels confident that he'll be able to use a complex asset so you've reduced the bar you've got more people buying it more simple questions and you spend more time supporting something when other uh, and which now means you need to pay for more wages um, and if you don't have that person supporting you don't have wages for for customer support for that many customers you get one star reviews because you didn't help me. You didn't answer my question within three seconds. One star review. So, um, and it's a piece of advice that Adam once gave me when I was talking about selling uh, my asset, uh, one of my many assets that I have never released. It's don't sell too low. Sell it to what you think it's worth and what you're happy with getting, uh, and that that's the most important. Sell it of what you think it's worth, because if you're selling for twenty dollars, you go well. I could get twenty dollars for it. Is it worth twenty dollars? Is your work worth twenty dollars? No, it's worth more than that. Then sell it for more than that. Somebody will buy it. Yeah, yeah. And actually, also to that point, um, we did have a five dollar tier for um, two years, and um, amazingly, it actually didn't result in any change in sales. Really. 
really. Yeah, like we had a five dollar tier. It was it was a little more restricted, so it did have a, a higher object cap, but it was it was basically a, a designed to to handle ninety eight percent of all the projects we'd seen, right? In terms of in terms of object count. So um, and the ones the two percent, um, it was like Blackbird Interactive, Jagex, you know those kind of guys, um, and and uh, they, you know they they are they're just on a different tier anyway like they're just they're just uh on a different level and, and price is not as much of a concern to people like that yeah. and um uh you know it we we figured okay well it was some way we could help out the indies right it's 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 kind of for us it was it was actually you know wasn't really it was probably about break even if we if we worked it out at a certain point if we got a certain amount but yeah no we just didn't it really didn't impact sales at all and i was really surprised by that right and it was it was you know if we we sold it for five bucks and then people were saying well why aren't you just doing this for free yeah. <laughs> and it's just like well guys like um does you know, too, checks it, were written too is, is it, so it so it's does it does it do people see at the five because well this is too cheap now so obviously it can't actually be a professional product because well that's the cheap. thing is we do we do want to we want to be able to respond to people, right? Like we want we want people to be able to come to us, not and and not just only kind of the big people. We want the little people who are running smaller studios, just getting started, to be able to come in and ask a question in Discord, and us to be able to say, "Hey, yeah, we can we can help you or or try this or we'll look into, into that," right? Um, and and uh, it's it's you know when when somebody's paying you like like five bucks or ten bucks a month, right? Ten bucks a month for two people, it's like in the amount of time it, it, it takes you to kind of uh, you know read read their their issue and stuff it's like okay well that this, this month's gone now yeah. in wages <laughs> right like it's 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 um it's it is really much very much like that so so it's kind of a you know I, I would love to give it out for free but I just know that it's you know it's it's not economically feasible like we just we would not be able to do that um, Chad's asking, you know, uh, if there was an official refund policy, people would be willing to shut up more in, in general for assets on the asset store. Uh, I've said this before, the only way a refund policy would work on the Unity asset store is if Unity paid the refund entirely out of their own pocket. Uh, because if you've purchased an asset, there's no way that that asset can be returned once it's downloaded, it's downloaded. It exists on that person's hard drive. It's theirs. They can do whatever they want with it. So you can't really refund. However, something like uh, Scene Fusion, if I had a license uh, and I and I bought a license and two days in, I was like, actually, this, I don't need this. This is not what I thought it was going to be. Is there a way to get a refund because you could just turn off his license after like two days or something? Is there like a cooling off period? Um, we've, we've actually done refunds. We don't have an, a, a kind of an official policy for it. Um, all I can say is that, yeah, we have, we have reached out that people said, oh yeah, it wasn't quite what I was expecting. And it's like, okay, well we understand. And we basically just canceled the, the charge. So then it takes a month to show up on their credit card, but at least we have, have that level of control, which is a benefit that we have on the asset store. They actually have something that's really scary. Um, so if you, you put an asset on the asset store, um and then uh they and then for whatever reason unity decides to pull the asset down right so they decide to pull the asset down and they decide to to unilaterally without your input refund all your customers maybe you were bad maybe you were maybe you weren't or you were you know there could be could be various reasons for it um you would have to pay those refunds 100 percent of them uh unity still takes their 30 percent cut what this is this is actually in the the T's and C's. They of, can force of, you to. I thought they couldn't force you. To, I thought they put all oh, the refunds in the hand of the publisher. Well, I mean, they bankrupt you is how it works, right? Like it, it's <laughs> when you talk about it in, in a in a practical sense. But there is this aspect of the T's and C's that is like, oh yeah, there's there's uh, you know, there, you you need to take thirty percent of the money, and uh, yeah, you they have that, and once they have that, it's done. Oh, by the way, if you end up refunding everything, um. You know, or the Unity decides to refund all your customers on you. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, come out, come out of your cut, so to speak. So, I mean, probably what would happen is a few people would 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 get refunds, and you know, um, that 
you know, 100% of that comes out of your pocket as the asset store provider, but Unity certainly gets to keep their cut. That's crazy. I know that when, when you were saying about the EU, yeah, the EU, I was going to mention that slightly differently. Uh, you have to, you have to give a 14 days uh, refund policy unless when they purchase it, you've made it clear that they've waived their right for their for their refund. So like in the on the Unity Asset Store, it's like goes by buying this, and Epic does it as well. You've you've waived your right to to your refund because it's a digital download. Um, so unless you've got that on the on the checkout, an EU person has to has fourteen days whatever it to go. I want my money back. Change my mind. Uh, yeah. Which I don't, yeah, we're I don't not think in you can the EU. Chocolate bar either. You can't go. I've eaten this chocolate bar two, five days ago. I want my money back. We can have the chocolate yeah. bar back. Well, here you go. It's in this plastic bag. Oh, you can keep it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Something yeah I mean, after it. if it's if it's on day twenty nine, it's like, oh yeah, no, we don't. We want a refund. It's like, oh really? <laughs> you have sessions. You guys were using it. Uh, I don't know. So it's it's kind of it, it's it's hit and miss. To be honest, like I think we've only had to issue a couple of refunds, and both of them were just because the the person just they they thought they were getting source control in one case um and the other time it was just it turned out that they couldn't kind of get their team cohesion going in, in such a way to make it work for them so ah. we're like oh yeah, okay so it's it's just you know they forgot the human element they forgot the human element like people have to have to like working together and and there are some people who just like to work totally alone right so so, so um chat some people in chat asking like how does so if i click this item here and i've clicked this item here so what these two things clicked right i'm going to drag yeah. them both into chat yeah. now okay now yeah i'm going to click off these justin now can click on this where it says select two these are the two yeah. things right and i'll be like yeah now and i'll be like justin could you put those back to where they should be please i i i move them and i can't remember where they should go and then justin will be like you know i'll put these to where i think they should go and if he moves okay, them, yeah yeah they will yeah, move i can move them in real time on my screen i'm not moving them I'm not moving them. He's moving them. It looks like it went there. I'm not sure. I'm gonna uh, pick this yeah. one. Sure. Let's okay. let's say that that goes there. I don't know where you got this from. I should have should have been watching. I'm gonna cover up the work I just did with it. How about that? I was, this is why this is why I don't do level design. <laughs> oh, this looks awesome. Oh, uh, what's this game called? This game is called Scene Fusion. This is. <laughs> Uh, it's actually it feels very much like a game. I'm in the editor, so it's two people. You can have what's the most you can have edit editing um, at the same time. Uh, we can set any limit really, uh, but we only we only people can only kind of sign up for up to ten because by the time you're at ten, you are a very big studio. Um, it's 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 you know uh, schools have um, up to forty students in wow. a scene. Forty students in a scene. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah. So imagine forty people using Unity at home, all of them moving things around uh, like that, and then now to Jason's screen, this has just moved. Um, the the other amazing thing, the other amazing thing is if you're using like one person's using Unreal, the other person's using Unity, you can uh, export from unity into unreal or unreal into unity with this this is the yeah, this is yeah. the, the holy grail of what most uh unity or unreal users that want to go from one to the other has been have been looking for because people go well you know i've already come so far and i don't I, oh, okay i can redo my code and stuff but it's such a pain in the bum to redo the entire scenes that are complex scenes that i've been doing so yeah yeah, and we have a we, it's a special plugin. So like this Unity plugin that we're using right now, it doesn't have that feature because it's on Scene Fusion One. Yeah. So we actually have a dedicated Scene Fusion Two for Unity plugin, and it talks to uh, Scene Fusion for Unreal to give us that functionality. Uh, look at this bloke here. We were playing about with this bloke. I'm just gonna drag in uh, another character. So if I drag in this lady here so now if i say hash look i'm telling justin to come and have a look at this so come and have a look at this justin yep and then there he is he's magically appeared and if now 
Justin wants. Justin could make this young lady dance for me. Dance for me, my dear. Wave your dear, arms. Dear, what am I? Oh, I'm grab. I'm grabbing the wrong part. I was grabbing a. <laughs> I was grabbing a. a Be careful, me! You're grabbing fellas. Yeah, I, I, I know. I can get in trouble if I'm, if I if I poke in the wrong spot. Exactly. I suppose. She's el She's an elven princess. I feel like I'm playing with dolls. Thousand dollars a month. Which one's a thousand dollars a month? What's a thousand dollars a month? We, oh, we're for not ten a people. Bucks a month. No, 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 no. Ten no. people would be twenty five. It's twenty five dollars per person. So yeah. twenty five dollars per person for for ten people would be two hundred fifty dollars a month. I can do that maths. Well, yeah, I can do that maths. You'd have to have uh, a lot of people. A poor lady, just making you're just making her sick. If Unity know, picked it up, it would be an extra service on top, so it might as well be a third party. Uh, what is this? That's hard to say. Yeah. Unity Colab uh, does not equal this. Well, yeah, like Unity this, Colab this is, is source control. Yeah, this yeah. is not source control. So uh, yeah. if you were, basically, you want to be using this with some kind of source control so that you can be uh, pushing the assets from your projects to each other because I need to have the same assets that he's got in the same folders. Yeah. Yeah. And source control is really good for source code and stuff like that, right? You real time. So, so we have a feature on, on the unreal side that we just introduced. Um, so unreal has their, their blueprint scripting, right? Um, so we have an experimental, uh, a blueprint node graph scripting system in scene fusion for unreal and it's basically like because it's visual scripting it's, it's a little easier to kind of pull off but basically whenever you you like move these node graphs around it's, it's kind of like the bolt scripting system for unity right um you move these node graphs around you connect them and you declare variables and you can write code that way uh it's it's something that you know you could probably use in a small team in a game jam but you definitely wouldn't want to use professionally because you would need to have like spot on communication with who's doing what because coding is Unlike level design, coding is extremely sensitive to side effects, right? Yeah. You're you're trying to do something, somebody modifies um, a dependency that you have, and then suddenly, you know, maybe you're works. you're trying to solve a bug, you get a new bug introduced and you have no idea where it came yeah. from. Right. So snapshots are super important when coding. You need to kind of make your the code aspect immutable. And that just that doesn't apply to the three D environment because well it's a three D environment and and you know, you don't really get side effects when a, a, a bridge on one side of the map is moved, <laughs> right? And, and your house on this side, you know, ends up being totally unaffected. So, so it's, uh, you know, two different paradigms. And at some point, you know, like our approach is to work around source control. So if you're using Colab, you can use that to distribute your project and do that, everything you need to do, um, distribute your code, uh, take version snapshots, so you use scene fusion, so you can all jump into the scene at the same time and work with it. And then of course, as people like build new stuff, um, scene fusion will tolerate the fact that not everybody's in perfect sync all the time. Um, so, you know, you can push things through source control later if you need to. I love that question mark thing. That was lovely. Yeah, on, on, on Unreal, we actually use a stand in volume. So it actually shows you the an access aligned bounding box oh. showing how big the object oh, is. Come on, get that way in Unity. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be bringing that over as part of the scene fusion two for. Well, you're gonna generate a primitive in its place. Yeah, 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 just a box, right? Yeah, At least that. people get a sense of what's supposed to be there and it's roughly it's what the orientation box. is. Yeah. Nice, Justin, mate, real Justin, not fake Justin. This is real Justin. For those who are coming late, they haven't got a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> At the start of the stream, somebody was asking, "Is this the real Justin?" It is indeed the real Justin. Oh my word! I am. Yep, I am. I am sh shocked to my core from what I've seen today. It really. If I had friends, I would be saying, and we were working on a game together. This will be the first thing that we would set up uh, when doing the level design, especially at the start, because you're well under your two thousand, because you've just started. <laughs> you haven't got anything yep. in your scene whatsoever. Um, even just like you know. 
talking about and like what you know what ideas have you got because otherwise what you're going to do use uh, Microsoft Teams and a whiteboard and draw it down or you know share your screen on Discord and, and uh, use MS Paint to scribble down your ideas no just load up scene fusion there's two of you uh, you know less than 2,000 objects definitely because it's an empty scene and start throwing objects around and say what if we put this here what if we do that there uh, you could even be using uh, something like Cinti Studios prototypes pack and be prototyping your scene together uh, can you drag and drop things into chat to specific people <gasps> to specific people or is it everyone that's a good question it's everyone okay. it's a global chat are you gonna are you gonna put a uh, one on one chat but there's only if there's only ever really up to 10 people it's kind of a moot point isn't it really yeah I mean like there those channels and stuff that that we could be doing it's just um, we kind of go on requests and the majority of people have been using scene fusion have actually been kind of lower team counts right so so it's you know they don't really need separate channels for things and then a lot of people are using you know um their own you know they'll be the, uh, slack actually slack is is very very common or at least has been very common and then people have been switching over to discord kind of in the last I'd say probably year or so right yeah i've um, noticed that fewer and fewer, more and more people are walking walking away from slack yeah, and with with the uh, with the Salesforce acquisition, I wonder how that's going to go. But um, yeah, it's uh, you know the the just for kind of quickly saying, hey, come look at what I'm saying. I've I've just posted it in in um, you know Scene Fusion chat for people to kind of click on stuff. That seems to be pretty kind of happy with that level of functionality so far. Um, so we'll you know we kind of just play it by ear when it comes to features like that. Are you going to be, uh, do, do you have like a Trello that you post where people can see the stuff that you're working on or is it completely closed shop? Uh, we're pretty closed shop just because we're, you know, we're so, we're so technical minded <laughs> um, that, you know, setting some of this stuff up, uh, you know, initially is just kind of a distraction, right? Um, we're getting to a point where we are going to need a public bug tracker and, and things like that. So you'll start to see those things kind of appear over the next several months. Oh, cool. So it's not like you're worrying about Unreal or Unity nicking your ideas. Well, we did, you know, we were being pretty cagey for a while just because, you know, especially when it was early on because we were going, well, you know, how difficult is this to pull off? Why wouldn't they do it? And we'd rather, we'd rather them just not try until we were a good ways along. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it seems, it seems like that has kind of paid off. Um, so it was a good, it was a so, good policy. Yeah, it was a good policy. So it's it's one of those things because it's a double edged sword, right? Because I want to tell people what we're up to, and I want to get feedback and, and get people involved. Um, but at the same time, you you kind of need to be a little bit sneaky because yeah. you don't want to get someone else who's who's bigger coming in and clobbering you before you even had a chance to get going. Oh well, I'm I'm glad you did not get clobbered, um, and uh, hopefully that um, some of that epic money helped buy some pizzas. For you all in the office. Um, oh yeah, no, it was, it was great help. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I wish I could I, look. I don't want to hang up the phone, but I've got work in the morning, um, <laughs> and it's one. It's quarter past one where I am. I honestly could sit and talk to you for another six hours. Um, I really. I'm. I'm gonna throw in. I need to find a friend. Uh, I hope we get if fresh meat's not allowed out to play tonight, um, but. We get fresh meat. I, I want to load up. I'm doing. I'm doing my cyberpunk series where I'm making my cyberpunk game, and it'll be great to have somebody in like helping me, like you know, moving some things around in the scene. I might do a YouTube video of that, showing off just how amazing scene fusion. It really. People in chat were writing, "I've seen messy giddy before, but not this giddy." And he's been giddy. Seriously, I am <laughs> so giddy by this. Uh, like Kill Kill's got one last question. Kill, kill, you have dominated the chat since you've come back in. I have to say, uh, at what point does the product start to have issues with larger worlds? So rather than, you know, have you, have you got two things? One is a one number cap of objects do things get messy. And actually the size of the world for that weird floating point issue where you're getting further and further away from the center. Um, well, I mean, yeah, the, the, the floating point scene fusion can't necessarily correct the floating point issue because it's 
it'll just replicate whatever the whatever the game engine is doing, right? So it's it's just reading the data, sending it over to the other side, and, and writing it back out. So um, you know, if the if the game engine has a way of handling it, then by default, it'll it'll be handled by Scene Fusion. Um, in terms of of uh, the other question was scene size, correct? Like how big of a scene can you you have before it starts to yeah. run into problems? Uh, that varies tremendously. It's like a, a t terrain, for example, takes up a ton of RAM on the server. Um, Why and there's other sync terrain. Go like, okay, look, we're not doing terrain. The, that, yeah, it's it's optional. So when if there was a terrain in here, we could click on it, and then you'd see a button saying sync terrain because it's a, it's a deliberate action which we did. Uh, mainly because terrain, like compressing it and sending it, it actually it really blew up the the setup time for the session. So we made basically an on demand process where it's like, okay, we're going to play with terrain now. Let's let's put that into the session. Um, so terrain can take a lot of a, a lot of data on the server because because what you're doing is you, you have the terrain kind of as a in a raw format in RAM and then people with their brushes are modifying it on all their clients and we yeah. actually send those those changes in real time oh. so you actually see the terrain deform and stuff with these colored brushes all over it and um uh it's it's that that basically you know that that can eat up like like gigabytes of ram pretty easily on the server so um what we typically see is you know people can do you know, 30,000 objects with a terrain. The server handles that just fine. The The other side of it is uh, locally on your client. Scene Fusion does increase the RAM and the processing. Um, the RAM is increased because uh, Scene Fusion does extra tracking to make sure that it can do what it's doing safely. So it actually stores uh, uh, multiple copies of, of probably much of the data in your scene. Um, it also it also has some background processes looking for you know changes that sneak in due to uh, plugins or or something else or code that you've written that may be dumping game objects in there uh, into the scene without you know notifying anything um, and those those types of things like they just kind of continuously run so like like I do recommend that that. We know if if you're you're running, we'll say eight gigs of RAM on an older system. I I would say double your RAM, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> just to be safe. Um, if you're going to be running, uh, you know, a hundred thousand, you know, building scenes with a hundred thousand objects, I would recommend something like thirty two gigs of RAM. I'm ha I've got thirty two. I've got thirty two. Yep. I'm happy. Thirty two is a pretty good pretty good number to I have. Yeah, right? I've got my CPU is not great, but I've got thirty two gigs of RAM, so I I think I've done the right thing. Yeah. Justin, mate, um, I'm going to let you go just so my wife doesn't kill me and, and I don't get in too much trouble tomorrow. Uh, you have volunteered to work with Messi on his Cyberpunk game, Fresh Meat. Yes, exactly, Fresh Meat. Welcome, welcome to the stream, Fresh Meat. You've escaped from uh, <laughs> from the family. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if we're going to bed now, Freshy. Uh, and you will be working with me on my Cyberpunk game, uh, putting to make bits of objects in the scene. So uh, we, you're going to be a co-star on a, on a YouTube video. So you're not allowed to say fudge or bugger. And Fresh Meat, uh, being our resident uh, celebrity Canadian, you've missed an entire stream with another celebrity Canadian. So uh, what are you going to do about it? That's a shame, isn't it? What is it in the water with Canada that's encouraging so many amazing uh, tech companies and startups? And on the other side, why is there so many dodgy marketing companies in Canada? Yeah, that's a good question. I've never really met a marketing company I like, come to think of it, when I've been looking around. I've, I've, I've met so many marketing companies, specifically from Canada, like especially all these SEO geniuses. And I'm sorry to say, they all seem to be uh, selling uh, snake oil. Yeah, well, that's that's just it. That just means they're not very good at selling, I guess. Right? Uh, <laughs> that's the first shame, test. Which is well, a shame if they're in marketing. You know what I mean? It's like... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you have one job. <laughs> you had one job. Now go away. But unlike the guys and gals over at Kinematic Soup, Scene Fusion had one job to make it possible for so many people to work in one scene together at the same time. Did they meet that job? Did they get it done? 
Oh, yes, they did. And so much more than that. Justin, thank you again. Justin's generous. For those, we gave away $3,000 worth of uh, Scene Fusion licenses. So if you missed the raffle, you missed out on $3,000 worth of Scene Fusion licenses. I'm still shocked. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your time. Thank you for giving this away for free to people for up to 2,000 objects. Uh, that might even increase sometime in the future. We just don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, but either way, it means that people can be sitting and working together uh, where possibly they might not have been able to work together, especially with COVID going on. So for 2020 and 2021, Justin, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, everybody. Um, I'm available on Discord if you have any questions. Oh, let me post your Discord in the chat once again. Yeah, and I'm in yours as well, Messi. Of course you are, because it's the best place in the world to be. Did you know, Justin, that you're... Uh, one of over 120 asset store publishers, or not just not just asset store, asset um, developers and game developers who are in the dev tag on my uh, Discord. That's that's yeah. why you're in such a uh, fancy VIP area. Where's <laughs> where's the link? You heard, I saw it a moment ago. On... Here, I'll, uh, I can I can post in the Discord. Yeah, in your Discord. Post, post it in the Discord, and then I'll copy and paste it into into the Twitch. Right. Da, 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 da. Did you send it to me as a DM or in the actual? Uh, hold on, I'm just copying it right now. Just copy, copy, copy. Well, there we are. Copy link. Fresh meat. Thank you for spamming our social media links. Um, so you should have it. Yeah, I don't. I actually didn't sign in with a Twitch account, so I I see the uh, the uh, thank yous in that. So I see it. Um, you're welcome. Um, I can't respond in Discord, but I can certainly. Or sorry, I can't respond in Twitch, but I can certainly respond in Discord. Click that link, everyone. Click that link. Join their Discord. They are a wonderful bunch of people, um, and it it really is. It's one of the most unique, amazing things I have seen. Um, possibly ever in Unity or uh, Unreal. Well, it's amazing. Messi's the worst advertiser for himself ever, but great for others. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm crap for myself uh, because I'm self-deprecating. I, I, I am. I am. I am rubbish. I'm quite possibly rubbish, but I'm very gift, grateful uh, and blessed to have such amazing guests like uh, Cinti Studios. And many thanks to Cinti for introducing me to the amazing, uh, real Justin over at Kinematic Soup. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hang out because if I keep on saying goodbye, I'm gonna find more things to talk to you about, Justin. Uh, you're that yes. wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Have, have a great. Have a, well, have a great day because it's your day and my night. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, great chatting. Thank you. Bye bye. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now, and down below there's that big juicy subscribe button, and right next to it is the magic bell. That if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Until next time.